Oh, what up? Welcome to another episode of the D Will Show. I am your host, D Will. And this is episode 122. Um, I got a good one for y'all today. Got my guy D'Angelo. He's be tapping in with me. My Chicago brother. Um, good dude, good hooper. Met him at the Denar Bros. Pro Run. Shout out to the Denar Bros. Um, yeah, we got a good one, man. Um, if you don't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, the D Will Show. Follow us on Spotify, Apple, Google, wherever you get your podcast. Go follow the D Will Show. Show some love. Uh, share with your loved ones. Um, you know, and I'm gonna keep coming with the content. You know, life kind of get crazy. Um, so I kind of, you know, fall in and out of it sometimes. But I'm back. I got a good one for y'all today. So definitely make sure y'all subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, follow wherever you get your podcast. Um, let me see. Look like my guys here already. Brody. Yo, what's the word? What's good, Brody? You can hear me good? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Man, how you feeling? How you living? Man, I'm good, man. Just got back not to like just got back yesterday actually. Uh, I'm happy to be back with you feel me. Happy to be back though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm glad you made it back safely, you know, with the fam, you know, stuff like that. Uh, you know, I just want to say I appreciate you for, you know, tapping in with me. I know we tried to do this a few times before, you know, but life kind of getting away sometimes. But, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I just want to say I appreciate you again for, for you know, taking time out to come onto my platform. For sure. I appreciate you for having me, definitely. No, for sure. Um, so we're going to get started, Brody. Uh, so, like, I want to start from the beginning, you know what I mean? Born in Chicago. You know, what was it like for you growing up? You know, how did you kind of get involved with hooping? Who kind of put the ball in your hand? And, you know, what made you really decide hooping is what you wanted to do with your life? Uh, so I was born and raised on a, um, in the south suburbs uh, of Chicago. So I'm from Harvey. Harvey. Okay. Uh, man, man to, to, to start from the beginning, man, who put the ball in my hands actually probably was my, was my nephew's. Which is which happened to be like older than me, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Dynamic. So like, yeah. uh, just watching them, you know what I'm saying, and then playing with them, and uh, we grew up on, on street ball a lot, you know what I'm saying? We grew up on EM one basketball, uh, mm -hmm. all of them. So really, you know, I wasn't even always the you feel me the best one for real, yeah. <laughs> you know. So, but I had to take from all of them, so you know, yeah. it gave me a chance to to be better, you know what I'm saying, at this and take it to the next level. Uh, I would say I definitely started taking taking hoops, like my career and stuff, serious for real, for real, around like maybe sixth, seventh, seventh grade for real, maybe. Mm -hmm. was, it, was it a moment, bro, or was it just like, all right, nah, like, I'm nicer with it? Nah, nah, like, I always been so, I was always nice, like, yeah. but like you know what I'm saying? I didn't know, like, you i could make something out of this yeah. for real until yeah. seventh grade when i really was starting to get like okay you know what i'm saying Man, hold on you really nice and people are schools are starting to recruit me you know what i'm okay. saying so okay. take it serious it's around that time for real okay. okay now did you play any other sports you know growing up as a kid bro we played everything did you really who did you tap into other other sports or was it always just hoop? ah believe it or not i never did for real but it's crazy <laughs> like I'm a huge fan of like all the sports for real. Like, yeah. like I really just became a huge fan of like tennis and all of that for real. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. I never did though, and I I think it was just like out of just like fear yeah. in a for real because I was so good at basketball. You didn't want to try nothing you know, else. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like to try something else and not be good at it. I think as a kid, it kind of was just like a little fearful for me. Yeah. So, but I. That I wish I could have did different though, you know. What would it like, have been though? What would you would you just been like, I'm gonna try everything and then we'll see how it falls from there? Or was it like you I know you said you like tennis uh, though? Would tennis have been your thing? No, nah, tennis <laughs> would have been my, thing. <laughs> <laughs> been my thing, but man, like baseball, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I would have really been good at football. Yeah. Like, 
you know, things like that for real. All the sports that we kind of grow up playing in the, in right. the hood. You know, right. like, I feel like I would have been good at those, though. Right. But definitely I would have chose baseball if I know what I knew. <laughs> now, them boys, yeah. hey. Man, they be getting like 10-year contracts, 400 mil, 500 mil. They body up the way we do, for real. They, <laughs> they I, just... They just throwing bread, bro, for real. Um, for you, Brody, when you really tapped into, you know, all right, cool, I want to hoop. This is what I want to do. Like, who was, like, some of your favorite, like, hoopers, rather it be in NBA, in your neighborhood, you know, college. Like, who were some of your people that you kind of was looking up to when he was like, all right, I'm kind of going to take him his game. I'm going to take him his game. Or he finna play, I'm going to watch him play. Like, who did you always lock in on? So, for me, man, it's – like I'm a, I'm a thief. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm a real thief. Like so, I really take from a lot of people for real. So it's a long list that I could go down. Hey, you got to, a, you got you know, to sometime, Brody. I'm gonna give you a, uh, I'm gonna give you a couple pointers uh, that really like impacted my game, though. Uh, so for me, obviously, like growing up, you know, Derrick Rose impacted a lot of our okay. games, especially when it comes to driving and our approach to the game and our everything for real so he impacted that a lot uh for me just for me as a two guard as a combo guard myself in general with my play type and body type and stuff like that i've always admired and like copied dwayne wade mm -hmm. kobe bryant uh and now even in today's game you know what i'm saying i really watch a lot of like devin booker a lot of you know, players like that, for real, for real, that kind of just match uh, my play style, right. you know. So I learned them a lot. But uh, as far as those two, like, I learned a lot from even Jalen, Jalen Brunson, uh, when I was in high school. Yeah. When we um on the same AU team, like, he, you know, his game was like, a, it was very professional, you know what I'm saying, at a, at yeah. a young right. you know age. Like, I was, I took a lot from him uh, when I was growing up. So, so definitely those are like the main people. Uh, I definitely always Kobe, Michael, you know what I'm saying? Mike Jordan, you feel me? All of that stuff. So like, but those couple yeah. are like what I've molded. Came into Your man. For real. Yeah. Okay. Um, for you, like you said, watching those guys kind of taking from everybody that you kind of, you know, felt like you were a fan of. What has been like your favorite moment for you in your career? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know you're still playing, you're still going on, but do you have one so far? Is it? going to college is it getting an overseas contract like what has been your favorite moment so far in your career now <laughs> i had a few of them um some of them was just like you know like when you when you make game winning plays you know what i'm saying game game stuff you can't really man that's like something that really be stuck in your head you know facts, what I'm saying? Facts, yeah uh when i made sports center you know what I'm saying? That was a huge one. Uh, kind of surprised. Yeah. You know, what I mean? that was a huge one for me. Uh, man, man, I had a lot of good moments, but I would definitely say like my favorite moment for real was when I was in junior college. Mm -hmm. Like those was like some of the favorite, my favorite years of uh, hooping. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I definitely thought though that I could name for real. Facts, facts. We gonna we gonna talk about that. We are gonna get into that. <laughs> Um, for you, Brody, like, do you have a special moment as a fan? You know, I know we all have special moments. You know what I mean? I know you said you look up to Mike, Kobe, D-Book. Like, just as a as a fan, like, what has been, like, your favorite moment that you've got to witness, whether it's been in person, live TV, whatever? Honestly, a couple of my favorite moments is when Bron won his first championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are some good moments, though, for real, for me, like, especially – because, like, LeBron is somebody, you know what I'm saying? He, like, my all-time favorite player. So, like, yeah, we had no – You to always go through about to, a fan then, huh? Through to get then, finally get those championships, you know what I'm saying? Like, nice. those are some of my favorite moments as a fan, for real. So, like, uh, definitely, that, that probably look probably that. That's probably the favorite, my favorite one, for real. Like, right, because as a, as a LeBron fan, you got to battle for him for a GOAT conversation. Yeah. Damn near, every time you talk about it, bro. And it was like a long time coming for real. Like yeah, it was just yeah. so, so much stuff just being said around that Thanks. time for real. So right. that was like some of my favorite moments. Uh, that I and then I feel like I got another one for real. But I don't. I don't I, it's like so many be popping up. In Man, my, yeah, yeah. It's hard to pick one, bro. For real. Yeah. 
Yeah, though, but that's LeBron. That when he won his first championship, that's probably one of my favorite moments as a fan, for real. But, okay. Growing up in Chicago, bro, you know I know just how Chicago breed hoopers, man. Everybody tough. Chicago is mostly known for guards. You know what I mean? Small guards at that, but just mm -hmm. guards overall. What has been like some of your toughest battles that you had to match up against somebody? Like who was that person for you that kind of was like that either had you like damn like. I'm really gonna go to war with this dude. Like we really going at it type thing. Like who has been that memorable hey, matchup for you? So many, it's so many. In Chicago. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's yeah, so many in Chicago, and I could go all the way back to damn that middle school. <laughs> like it's so many in Chicago though. But if I'm fresh off the top of my memory, the toughest, some of the toughest battles, man, with in high school, definitely with Morgan Park. Definitely. Morgan Park. Oh. Uh, Charlie, uh, Josh Num, uh, Katie Num, even when I was a freshman and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like them, them guys was tough. Uh, Lawan, Lawan Pipkins Num. Oh Bo yeah. Oh my God, them bro. tough. Talking about tough for real. Uh, Every night you had a matchup, bro. Every night. And, uh, Saint Rita. Uh, oh, with Armani and them and Charles and them. Armani, Charles. Uh, Saint Joe's with Glenn, Nick, uh, Jordan. Them, yeah. Man, like the list go, it's like it's so many when it comes to guards for real. The list right. goes on. Like right. them the toughest, them were some of the toughest battles for real. Man. Especially the one I hey, shout out to Lawan, especially the one, man. Tough, yeah. So tough in the high school. He still is tough right. now, but Facts. he was different in high school, man. Facts. Um, so you went to Hillcrest High School. Yeah. Um I read you had, you know, great numbers, you know what I mean, uh, conference championships, stuff like that. What was, like, your whole – how was your whole, whole high school experience, you know what I mean? I know sometimes, you know, it would be kind of rocky for sometimes. Sometimes people get in trouble. Sometimes people don't have their best start to high school. What has been, like, your whole career process through high school? Like, if there was anything about that that you can change, would you? Man, high school was definitely uh, – I feel like – I. I didn't really get the max out of high school yeah. like I could. Yeah. You know what I'm, I'm saying? And it could have been a new a number of reasons. I'm not gonna really, yeah. you know, yeah. go too deep into it. But uh, uh, my experience in high school was it was like kind of it was okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I didn't really put up the the numbers that I wanted to, but I put up good numbers. You know what I'm saying? Enough to get me recognized. Enough to get me okay. opportunities and things like that, you know what I'm saying? Especially here in the South Suburbs. Yeah. Uh, you know, the South Suburbs is almost like we, we competing, obviously, against our stuff in the Burbs and okay. city school. You yeah. know what I'm so, uh, really, we're just competing to try to earn the respect of those guys, you know what I'm saying? And I was uh, lucky enough to um, earn the respect of those guys, you know what I'm saying? Because I played AAU with, I started off with main streaks like my freshman year and stuff, and then I went to uh, the fire and uh, things like that. So, but I definitely feel like I could have got way more out of high school. Mm -hmm. uh, my high school, Hillcrest, is it's a challenging, it's a challenging place. You feel me? Like I didn't really get the exposure that I needed. For real, I got more exposure through AAU almost. Yeah, and that comes. With, I think that comes with just like from being playing in the suburbs too. Now let me ask you this, Brody. I don't mean to cut you off. Now, was that the high school you had to go to? Like, was that the high school in your neighborhood, or was that one that you uh, kind of chose that you wanted to go? to? I kind of got, got Coach Houston kind of recruited me almost to come to Hillcrest. Okay. Uh, okay. I was born. I was living in Harvey at the time. Harvey. Oh, and so we, you were supposed to go to Thornton then? Thornton or Thornwood. Yeah. Okay. Everybody I grew up with, kind of, you know what I'm saying, but. I always knew that, like, like I said, I started taking it serious, you know what I'm saying, around, like, seventh grade. And I kind of always knew that, like, man, if I don't – though this was, like, one of the most important decisions for me because uh, I, I wasn't – I was a problem child growing up, as most of us be, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I felt like yeah. if I would have went to Thornwood or something, uh, I think that that would have carried on for me. You know what I mean? Like, I probably would have ran into something that I really didn't have no business uh, running into. Uh, yeah. and I, he recruited me, you know what I'm saying? When I was in, like, eighth, seventh, eighth grade, and uh, we had moved, so I can go to Hillcrest, though. Yeah. You know? yeah. That was, like, the 
the best decision for real, for real, for me, because I learned a lot of lessons that I use, you know what I'm saying, today from yeah. Crest. And then like, I was new there. Like, I didn't really know people, which was, it's, you know, that's always a benefit for real, because yeah. you're not yeah. being to the same shit that you would do at schools you grew up with, where everybody right. else. Yeah. That helped for real in the long run, right. though. Thanks. Uh, my guy Samaje, uh, he he said, "Is AAU kind of the way you got to college? You know what I mean? I know you said you kind of had the best high school experience, but like, I know you said you kind of made a name for yourself on the circuit, and that's kind of like what AAU is for. You know what I mean? Especially now, bro, we got all these huge cameras and, huge and ball is life now. You know what I'm saying? Social media. You know what I mean? It wasn't really big that big back then, but like, was that kind of like your way of really? I think." Around the time that I was graduating, around 2015, I think that that's when AAU actually was taking that huge turn. Yeah. You know, I started in the EYBL circuit and um, all of that stuff. Uh, I think that's when, like, AAU was really taking the turn. Because when I was coming to high school, you know what I'm saying, we were still getting uh, letters and stuff and things from colleges and, you know what I'm yeah. saying, and stuff like that. Never no real... You know, somebody coming in the gym, checking us out, or this, that, the third. So I think that around that time, that's when that social media and the ACU started really dominating the game. Thanks. You know, Thanks. So Thanks. Uh, AAU is definitely how I kind of got to college, but because of my decisions, I had to go to junior college. But that is how I was getting acknowledged from Division mm. schools, though. Yeah. Okay. But definitely nowadays, AAU is unfortunately way, way more bigger than the program you go to in high school almost now. No, like, no. that's facts, bro. More decision than the high school you go to now. So, that's facts. And, and it's hard to kind of, it's hard to deal with us, with AAU too now, for real. It's so many teams. It's so many. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. It's so much going on. No, hey, you like it's so watered down, bro. You got mugs in LA hooping for Chicago teams. You got mugs from Texas hooping for New York. I'm like, come on, man. bro. This is supposed to be like, all right, your best versus our best, and we gonna compete. You know what I'm saying? For real, like, and like, I was never always too crazy about stacking teams. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? I always enjoyed and wanted to go against. You know what I'm saying? Some of my city friends. You right. feel me? Some of my. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? Teams like that, for real, for real. Like, that's always when I, uh, when my best work showed up. Facts. You know? Facts. You so, got to. You got to, bro. You never know who that. You never know who you matching up with. On top of that, we're trying to earn the respect from them guys. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Herb, so, like, Facts. I'm Facts. get my name. I'm trying to earn and get what y'all got, for real. Facts. Like, Facts. Definitely, though. But, hey, you have taken over, for sure. Uh, that's definitely the best way possible to get to college now yeah but not the only way mm. and um you got to be careful with the programs you choose too now Thanks. really careful so. Thanks. hey samaje hold on brody i'm gonna uh i'm gonna tap you in in a minute um all right so you you know you went to hillcrest you played there now when it was time for college recruitment bro you know you end up choosing uh, Wabash Valley, you know, what kind of led to that decision um, and kind of like what schools were that you were looking at, what schools were kind of interested in you yeah. and what all led into, you know, you choosing that school to go to? Uh, I, I had a bunch of little, I had a bunch of junior colleges uh, coming out of high school. Um, I had like in, Indian Hills, uh, Vincennes University, uh, all of those decisions and um. What kind of led me to Wabash was, you know, I really ain't had nobody, I really ain't had nobody looking out for me in a way to helping me make these, these important decisions, mm. you know, in my life. Uh, so normally what I would do, I would just trying to do, I would just do my own research a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And uh, see what was best for me and my play style. And I'm real big on loyalty, you know what I'm saying? So things like that. So recruiting me for a long time and you know, that really shows real interesting. For me for real uh but one thing about wabash that i liked uh was that tony allen went there you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying he from the crib yeah you know uh who else went down there um a couple a couple guys from the south suburbs went down there yeah uh, and they was running a real good program you know what i'm saying they was in the same conference as vincennes 
like I said, I was getting recruited by Vincennes, but they was like on some, like some, like they know they was big dogs type stuff for real. Oh like yeah, I, they was not slow. They gonna competing against you know what I'm saying like yeah. <laughs> those type of people. So uh, that kind of eggs me out with them. Um, I was real interested in them too actually. Uh, that kind of eggs me out though with them when they was like trying to act like it was they like they was really overly doing me a favor mm -hmm. almost you know i play for them uh so wabash just showed a lot of love and uh when i went down there to take the visit it just you know what i'm saying with coach coach walker coach mo and uh those guys it kind of just it felt like home for me you know what i'm saying it's in a small smaller town little country town you know what i'm saying in the south in southern illinois mm -hmm. uh it just felt like home for me for real and i just you know what i'm saying i I made that decision for real to go down there, and it was actually one of the best decisions of my life for real. Thanks. Uh, I read up that you led them to scoring for two consecutive years. Um, you guys ended up winning a Region 24 title. How was how was the – I know you just said it kind of was the best choice you made, but, like, how did you kind of adapt to the to the lifestyle of college ball? You know what I mean? I know it's totally different. You know what I mean? Sometimes the dudes yeah. be bigger. You got to train differently. You got to wake up early for ways and lifting and class. Like, it's a total different ball game. Yeah. How did you adapt to that different college lifestyle? Did it take you a minute? Because some people are like, man, I want to quit. College is different. Like, how did you adapt to it? <laughs> it didn't really take me that long, though. Uh, I was excited. You know what I'm saying? I was definitely yeah. excited out of high school basketball in Hillcrest. <laughs> you, from a young age, I was always told that, you know what I'm saying, my game was not for high school basketball almost, yeah. you know. And uh, I was excited to get out of that dynamic for real. So the adjustments for me was easy, and they gave me the keys. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that's they, all you need to hear. They built the program. You kept, you feel me around me for the for two years. You oh. know what I'm saying? So oh, yeah. And then, and I did my, my own personal recruiting too. You yeah. know. What I'm so like, I kind of like even when I went my first year there, like I can't. Came in with the mindset of that, you know what I'm saying? This was gonna be my team, and I was showing that, you know what I mean? And uh, they gave me the green light, and you know what I'm saying? And I really made the most of that uh, opportunity. Uh, but my first year when I came in, I was like the only person that was uh, on a team from up here, you know. And then personally, just did my own recruit. And I had like I had got like six other players, <laughs> six <laughs> other players from the career to come hoop down there, man. I, we did what we were supposed to do too for real uh yeah but yeah they gave me the keys man that that really opened up my game actually mm. opened up my game because they allowed me to actually play point guard too mm. you know because i'm a good scorer everybody always toss me at the two or whatever the case is you mm -hmm. know but they really allowed me to like unlock my game in a sense for real because you know i was there almost i'm posting triple doubles and stuff whatnot and all of that type of stuff for real like because they allowed me to really have control of the game for real and really be a leader you know what i'm saying that's why i learned how to be a leader that's why i learned how to you know run the team control tempo you know stuff like that really mm. that gave me uh the the versatility that i have you know what i'm saying and now like that really helped shape me for real that two years right there thanks right. now um you do your two years there you know what I mean? You 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 kill like I said, you the star player, and then uh, you know it was time to, to to transfer. You know how did you end up at at Utah State? Uh, you know what I mean? Kind of what led into that choice uh, going there? Mm. Uh, man, like I said, I'm big on uh, <laughs> yeah, boy, you know what I'm saying? They like man, they was recruit when I tell you they was recruiting me for a very long time. And uh, everything that they were saying was making sense. You know what I'm saying? They number one leading scorer and stuff was leaving that, that mm. year of me coming. Uh, a lot of stuff they were saying was making sense for real. Uh, I kind of, man, and it was that was a tough decision too, though, because I had 26 Division One scholarships when I left uh, Wabash, you know. So, like, the variety of what to choose from was like, with nobody helping me make these made decisions so like i'm going back into my research bag and trying to see what's the best decision for Wait, me uh hold on hold on bro hold on bro you said you had 26 division one offers when you left all <laughs> yeah, yeah I, <laughs> I was uh i ended up 
Man, I ended up like finishing like top 15 in the nation. Uh, I had our team, we was like top 15 in the nation. Uh uh man, like I ended up in I think I ended up being a, yeah, I ended up all American at uh my sophomore season, end of my sophomore season. Um but yeah, that was like man, I it was so many for real. Like I'm talking about every single day, <laughs> I'm getting calls. It was to the point I almost like I had to put my phone. You feel me now? Like yeah, man, I'm not really talking about nothing. They just checking up on me and trying to you know what I'm saying, build yeah. a relationship with me and stuff for real. But uh, like I said, I ain't had nobody really helping me with them decisions. So you never know if you making the right decision mm. at that very moment to. Mm -hmm. you there and then see how things pan out for real that's the hardest part when you don't really have that guidance or that you know what i'm saying to help you navigate making them decisions yeah. yeah uh so man it came down to it i was patiently waiting like i didn't even make my decision until like probably the end of the season almost of my sophomore year but that's when like the majors the high majors and stuff start rolling around you know what i'm saying i start getting looks and stuff from like oklahoma state uh texas even mark had like stuff start rolling in for real they i'm having a coach in the gym almost every day now at this point yeah and uh man but like utah state was just like one of the first teams you feel me mid i guess they like a mid to high major mm -hmm. in the mountain you know what i'm saying that really jumped on me you know what i'm saying and based on my research and like i always i wanted to play in the nba i mean like for me that was you know what i'm saying my ultimate goal uh so based on my research of past players and, and what they've done and what they've done in this conference uh is this an nba conference you know what mm. i'm saying and this that yeah okay yeah. You know what i'm saying because like i had a lot i had every school in chicago actually you know what i'm saying but i wasn't really that keen on staying home and Thanks. i know like this what, a little what come with that this is just how I was thinking about the process. I don't know how everybody else do, but like me, I'm I'm like, okay, if I came home in these conferences, I think what's in the conferences here? Uh MVP and uh what's what Loyola and all that stuff. Don't know? give me the line, bro. <laughs> don't don't give me the line. I'm like, hold on. Damn. I think the if only the only big one, bro, I think it was DePaul when it was in the Big East. I think that was yeah. the only one. Yeah, so like, like, and they didn't, they actually didn't even, they actually didn't hop on me. That was like actually one of the <laughs> only schools. Paul didn't talk to you? That was actually one of the only schools in Chicago that didn't hop, jump on, on my train for real. So from the other schools, though, like, I was just thinking like this. I'm like, yo, okay, I'm looking at the past players that's getting the opportunity, you know what I'm saying, to leave from this. I'm, damn, he averaging all like 25, like. Yeah. Oh God, this or that. He, so I'm like, if I go to one of these lower league conferences, I'm going to have to overly average, like. you going to have 40 <laughs> down there. <laughs> so I'm like, I look at it like, man, I'm like, damn. And then in college, it's kind of different. Like, you can't really just, I'm paying attention. So I'm real intelligent on, like, what's going on for real. Like, so I'm like, okay, you get to these universities. They not letting me control the game, you know what I'm saying, as much as my junior college is. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm probably going to be able to average around no more than 18 points. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm, if I go to OVC, I know I'm going to have to average this type of this type of numbers. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But yeah. if I go to the Mountain West or these one of these Power 5 high major conferences, I only got to average, you know what I'm saying, no more than 15 points. Right. And I'm getting for real, for real as a, a prospect. Right. So, like, those led me into those decisions and then, like, the Mountain West just added up, you know what I'm saying? It just, I wanted to compete in the NBA con uh, conference, you know what I'm saying, with other players that's prospects and stuff like that and show what I can do. So it led me to make that decision. Plus, I just wanted to kind of get away from home, too. Right. So, How was it out there, bro? I know that's totally different from <laughs> Chicago. You know what I'm saying? You're in the middle of all the mountains, and it's just, it's a different lifestyle out there, bro. How did you adapt to it? It's actually yeah. beautiful. Real. like they got one of the uh most beautiful campuses probably in the world yeah uh, but it's definitely a super religious uh place you know what i'm saying uh but we kind of made the most of it you know what i'm saying i met some of my closest uh closest homies uh there, right. you know that i still got relationships with to this day right. so it just definitely was different though uh especially coming from chicago 
you know, like we yeah. tend to be a little more competitive and a little more aggressive yeah. say, mm -hmm. than a lot of the rest of the world. So when I went out there, you know what I'm saying? It, it was little moments, you feel, little moments I'm getting turned and like they thinking I'm trying to, you feel me, box or something. Like, <laughs> like no, I just play with this edge, man. Y'all don't know. How can we just talk? Even we talk shit in Chicago, you know what right. I mean? So definitely, that was one of the things that was a major adjustment. And I think that kind of probably unknowing, un unknowingly, like unconsciously, mm -hmm. that probably rubbed certain people the wrong way a little bit, you know? Yeah. thing that I, I didn't know of, like you, I had to learn that growing up, you know what I'm saying, of how you can rub some of the most important people the wrong way and put yourself in bad positions for real life. Thanks, bro. And you, yeah. it's crazy, crazy you said that, bro, because like, you, you see that happen to a lot of Chicago Hoopers, bro. A lot, bro. Of, a a lot, lot of them, like Pat Bev for one, bro, like, they just think Pat Bev is just this dude that's just cuckoo, but Pat Pat Bev just played with a play with a chip on his shoulder. You know what I mean? Pat Bev had to work his way up and came from nothing. You know what I'm saying? It took him, it took him in order to go overseas and get those opportunities or whatever, and then get to the league for people to finally not misunderstand his personality. See, in college, they misunderstood his personality. Right. Like, uh, I think he went to uh, Arkansas or something, right? Mm -hmm. But it didn't work, work out there. You know what I'm saying? Something that happened uh, throughout the band, but I do see a lot of players uh, from Chicago that struggles when they get to that next level almost in a sense because I guess, you know what I'm saying, just the, like I said, sometimes the aggressiveness and then we got the, the lack of uh, discipline. You know, uh, we a guard-heavy city right. and uh, sometimes it can get a little loose. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. like sometimes it can get real loose and uh, – I think that, that when they get to the next level, it, it just comes down to a lot of just discipline and, like, structure. Mm -hmm. and like, like, those are two big things, for real, for real, that I noticed when I got to the next level that is key if you want to play. Yeah. Like, yeah. like two things. Like, you have to be coachable. You got to learn to walk the bam. Like, those two things was huge, for real. And I think a lot of us – we struggle with that sometimes coming out coming from here for real. So yeah. yeah. Now how did you how did you maintain like how did the rest of like how did you end, so basically how did you end up a pro? Like what was the process after leaving Utah State? Did you you know what I mean? Did you have any NBA workouts? Did you talk to any NBA teams? Like how did the whole process after that go for you? Uh, believe it or not, I haven't I haven't had no NBA workouts. It's crazy. Uh, and I don't even be thinking about it no more today, you know what I'm saying? But, like, it was crazy when I first was coming out of uh, uh, college because I kind of somehow in college, I guess, I don't know. I, I, sometimes I'll be thinking, like, my light be shining too bright sometimes. I'm an ultra-confident person, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I never knew that that rub grown men and coaches the wrong way sometimes. Uh, they get to thinking that. I think that I'm better than a program or team or something or some crazy like that for real. But uh, kind of like the coach kind of just like started going in a different direction from me. You know, I started off strong at Utah State and uh, he randomly just started going in a different direction uh, than me. And um, I don't want to dig too deep in the past like that, but like he started like I started accumulating a lot of DMPs, you know what I'm saying? For for people that don't know, a DMP is basically, you know what I'm saying, a, did not even play. Like, didn't even touch the court, didn't know none of that, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I never really got an explanation, even still to this day, to what had happened or what did I do wrong or whatever the case was. But I had navigated through it, you know what I'm saying? And I was uh, doing the best that I can at that time. Uh, I actually was doing so good at the beginning, like the first half of the season, and I was kind of showing up on mock drafts and stuff, you know what I'm saying? That was exciting. And then, like I said, it kind of took a, a turn. And um, I'm not sure what, what I did, my what part I played, you know what I'm saying, in that or whatnot. But, yeah, I was, like, accumulating a lot of DMPs and stuff, and for no reason. I'm not even knowing why I'm in a doghouse or, not like, or nothing like that. And uh, that kind of – a major setback to me you know what i mean 
And uh, so obviously with that being said, I was going to transfer. You know what I'm saying? I was going to uh, look um, in a different direction. But uh, I'm like, man, man, you know what I'm saying? I always wanted to, I took, I've been a pro, you know what I mean? <laughs> like from a young age, that's been my, my dream, you know what I mean? And uh, yes. I mean, heck, dreams of going to college or even, I only went to college, university, honestly. I felt like mm. I could probe after junior college. But no, only, facts. I really only went because I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give myself the chance, you know what I'm saying? And I want to see what this about, you know what I'm saying? I want to see what the March Madness about. I want to see what all, yeah. you know what I'm saying, college basketball about for real. So, like, I took that, I did that, and, um, yeah, man, love. Uh, towards like the end of the season and stuff and I I was coming to the decision to transfer or something like that and uh I felt like I was kind of blackballed in a sense like I'm hold on like I'm watching these kids now even nowadays and I'm watching I'm like man this kid coming from a low major and he's jumping to a high major mm -hmm. and, stuff. and I'm like then like when I was around my time I'm like I wasn't getting recruited by high majors and stuff I'm like hold Oh, that's like crazy. I'm like, there's no doubt that the film is out there that I can play. You know what I'm saying? That I got who up the bam. It's just like I was in a doghouse for some reason. And uh man, so so it came down. So I'm getting like D2s and stuff, uh NII NAIAs and stuff, and like nothing is wrong with that. You know what I mean? I'm not saying ever that anything is wrong with that. They got some some great hoopers, some killers for real, for real. I know a bunch of them myself couple of them pros in the NBA and stuff and all of that. Yeah. So I'm not ever discouraging that route or anything. It just wasn't in my cards almost. And which sometimes, you know, when you look back, I wish I could, I would have possibly, you know what I'm saying, took more of an in-depth look, you know what I'm saying, at those routes. But like I said, I've always felt like I was a pro. So I wasn't getting the looks that I felt like I deserved at the end of the day. So I'm like, to hell with it, you feel me? I might as well go make my money. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Learn the pro game, learn from other pros. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I still got to get to the league. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, I obviously, man, like even with those DMPs, man, I just tried to move forward for real. Like, like I was just, man, I I wasn't playing, so I just started like working out before practice. Working out after practice, I started really setting my mindset towards, you know what I'm saying, the next, the next thing, the next goal, which was at the time before the NBA G League had become so political now. So I don't even know for real what to even call it no more. Like, <laughs> but you know, I wanted to take that route too. Um, I never really had interest in going playing international for real, for real. Yeah any of us do at the end of the day uh i think it's just something that we kind of gotta accept sometimes you know but so that season ended i ended up i got enough look you know what i'm saying to get drafted into the g league though you know and, and uh get drafted into the g league uh and that was kind of like a, a eye opener too for real because like that was around like the time when I really discovered like how political the G League really is and stuff like that for real. So that didn't, you know, so I got drafted like first round or something or however that go. Mm -hmm. And know, uh, I got traded the same day. <laughs> like <laughs> so I ended up I got traded. I got drafted by the Warriors G League team and ended up traded to the Houston Rockets G League team, which is known for having, I guess, all of the all of the top players i guess they somehow always managed to get and like it became a thing between me and you know what i'm saying another player who had a kind of bigger name yeah. Yeah. on a bigger platform you know what i'm saying and things like that so that edged me out a little bit and then i had to go overseas so that's what started my uh international career you know so yeah Man. like it's been it's definitely been like a as good as as good as I am, it's definitely been like a weird, weird route, like a real, real weird journey for real, for real. Yeah, I don't know if you know, Brody, but like I said, Samaj, that's that's my guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, he kind of he he kind of had he kind of had the similar. I don't know his full story, but like 
bro, I'm supposed to be in the league right now. You know what I'm saying? Hands down. Compared to what we see now in the league, bro, like people like y'all that really got games should be in the league. There's some dudes in the NBA hey. now. I'll be looking like, bro, where Don't, do we even come from? You know what I'm saying? Hell, man, it's hard to even watch for real. You know what man. I'm saying? And like, like for him, bro, bro shouldn't be over there. He should be still in the NBA. He shouldn't be over there playing overseas ball unless that's his choice. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like it should come down to y'all. Y'all though, like let y'all be the one that that choose y'all destiny of how y'all career gonna go. You know what I'm saying? All this politics and who you know and you being confident in yourself, like all that's cool, bro. Like we hit a hoop, bro. You know what I'm saying? And you, man, I felt like I when I was growing up, I felt like that's exactly what it was. It used to be like that. Like and I was told that if you could play, they gonna find you or they gonna, you know what I'm saying? This or that. But that dynamic changed heavily for real, for real. Especially, especially as social media started to grow, the dynamic of a real hooper has been lost almost. Right. Like, it's completely been transformed almost into something else for real. Like, I, honestly, I'm going to just say, you know, these guys with all the highlight videos, all of these is frauds. Frauds. <laughs> Highlight, highlights make you look so good. Same for real. Like, bro, you, mean, you, credit you, to the, you can look videographers though. You know? That's credit to them, cause like, man. But we gotta. I feel like, man, we gotta stop on this on that though. For real, like these videographers are just taking money from people and just recording anybody at this point now. Man, when I was growing up in high school, touch ball is like you had to be. Hey, I Man, to have a video, you had to be nice for real. Like no facts. Man, it wasn't that many. It wasn't that many people with with ballers' lights or this, that, the third. When I was growing up in high school and middle school and all that stuff, like you really had to be one of those for real. And it's and it's crazy, Brody, because me and you the same age. Like when I was when I was when we was coming up, bro. Like I was watching a kill car. I was watching. Uh, man. Uh, Austin oh, Rivers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like oh. boys that real deal had game. Now it's just like, bro, I can go to, I can go who better than our bro and drop ten and tell and tell Eddie, yo, make it look like I'm a D1 prospect. And Eddie gonna get me right, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not no, that's not no. You know what I'm saying? Knock on Eddie, cause at the end of the no, day, no, 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 facts, facts. But he facts. doing his job and they gonna do what they gotta do uh, to facts. support their own careers and stuff like that. But facts. I think I don't know the game. The, the essence of the game just has been it's been lost for real in that right. type of stuff. Right. You got guys that's really not even good, but got the videos and they 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 fooling people on the right. internet like they so. Right. But right. these guys don't, don't even really you know what I'm saying, right. man. Like they ain't putting in the work. You know what I'm saying? It's easy for somebody to hit up Eddie and be like, yeah, bro, do this for me and make me. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, bro, like. You got a real deal had game, bro. You got to yeah. been, a, you know, been through some situations of, where you really like, all right. A lot of stuff that's, there's a lot of stuff that's going on that's, don't get me wrong, it's good for the game, but it's taking a, I feel like it's taking the essence away from the game for real. And like, oh. and I'm not putting, I'm not knocking nobody in what they do. You know what I'm saying? Even with these like little semi-pro leagues and stuff and all of that type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's really confusing people for real like it's really confusing real life pros who sacrifice a lot of stuff to go over there you know what i'm saying to make this money to provide and try to further their careers and stuff for real for real and then you got people you know what i'm saying at the comfort of their homes and playing in these leagues and really considering they self oh so much better than pros or something because they putting up numbers in these little leagues and uh it's just a lot of stuff that's just messing with the game the, the essence foundation of the game for real for real so Thanks. honestly that, that's a whole nother conversation though that i could go on and on about you know Thanks. hey samaj so said is it cool if i could add him in real quick but he said he got a few questions for, for sure you. for sure definitely we chopping yeah. it up I no, for sure. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Like he been, he been, you know what I'm saying. Oh, yo, what up, what up, brother? What's up with y'all? What's up with y'all, boy? Man, I'm good, we, man. We chilling, Brody. Man, we said talking about, you know what I mean. Nah, I've been, I've been listening. You know me, I'm tapped in every time you get on. I'm, I'm for tapped sure. in. <laughs> for sure. Tapped in, one brother. Hey, for sure. Hey, so my dear, bro, like for you, you know what I mean. With somebody that been, that's been drafted, you know what I mean. That have been through, 
you know, playing in the NBA court and, you know, kind of going through the similar situations been going, bro been going through? Like, is there, like, some advice that you kind of could just dish out? Even, even like when that? I was hearing him talk, though, damn it, he <laughs> – damn it. Come from the same type, you know what I mean? Same shit. Yeah, like, I ain't really, hey. I ain't had no OGs that, you know what I mean? Hey, they on, give me the game. On. I ain't had no hold game. On, hold on real when, quick, Brody. We, we finna go up real quick. Yeah. Hold on. We got somebody finna tap in. Hold on. We finna go up now. Hold on. Yeah. And yeah, I ain't even, go up. I can't even be on here too long. I gotta go to this little interview in a little minute. Bet. Jay Rand. Yeah. 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 He, he, he can tell you, he. He can tell you, yeah. he can tell you at all. He do, I, I was watching him coming up. Yeah. yeah. Jay Randall, what's good, Brody? Man, chilling, man. I'm saying interviewing, bro. That's the word. And it's crazy because you, you got the, you know, he was just talking about like, kind of like what you be talking about in your own lives, uh, Jay Randall, like how social media kind of really killing the game. You know what I mean? You being blackballed out of being in the pros and the G League and, you know, people kind of rubbing you the wrong way. I want to kind of like you can say I want to. Yeah, you can say black ball, but like how he said, people don't understand though. Like, especially where we come from, like we trying to get it too. Like, yeah, they might not like how we move, or right? they might not like how we carry ourselves, or think we the shit. Everybody think they the shit. Yeah. Everybody Man, I... think they that. Everybody. That's the only way you are gonna stay in the league for real. Or be, get to the league. If you ain't thinking you that. It ain't even no point for you to. Yeah. I learned that the hard way though. I got to the league, and I got there trying to be like. When I got to the league, I'm going some shit. I was trying to make everybody happy and shit. I'm trying to make everybody comfortable. Wasn't nobody trying to make me motherfucking comfortable. No, they weren't no, trying to help me out. They weren't trying to do none of that. They weren't trying to. I fuck up, but the veteran look at me just be shit and shit. He'll watch me fuck. he watch me fuck the whole joint up. He get out there. He get out there and do everything right. Then he look at me, young fella. You see what I did? But damn, why you ain't tell me what I was feeling like? That's not, not the type of. That's not the type of league that that is, man. Like yeah. it ain't like it was yeah. back in the day. They, yeah, yeah, nah, yeah, yeah. Really ain't. trying to look look out for their youngsters like that. You know what I'm saying? And then if you come in with an attitude. Are oh, you too cocky? Hell no! You too that. You too that. You too. It's always gonna be some. That's other when his job on the line. Hell no! He ain't trying to look. Yeah, I think. You know, I think. I ain't gonna lie. Raymond, Raymond Felton gave me. He he kept it one thousand with me. He he did. Before though, he was like, when I first got there, he wasn't trying to fuck with me. He wasn't fucking with me. Like, let this, you know, I let him crash out, buddy. But after I got <laughs> the little spot or whatever, he like, shit. I ain't gonna lie. I don't want you. To, you taking food out of my family. <laughs> I ain't never think about it like that though. I'm thinking like I'm thinking shit. I'm coming from college though, so I'm thinking these my guys. Like oh shit, this is my team. These we teammates. We that shit don't work like that. It's every man for their self. <laughs> this shit cut throat. Yeah, they yeah. they you, would, you, you crash. It'll up. never be like that, killer. I got kicked out of the gym be, be, uh, uh, for Raymond Felton, bro. When I was in high school, I went up to uh to uh Tim Grover spot. And I bust Raymond felt ass. <laughs> Tim Grover, I, listen to me, this is a true story. Tim Grover came to me and was like, you can't come back in here. Like, this dude pay a lot of money, and you coming in here doing that to him, you can't come back in. I know. I'm like, what type of God, software? God, that's, that's, how, that's how it really be. That's how that shit really be. That's how that shit really be. That's how that shit really If you ruffle some feathers, oh, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. We, you good. You great and all, yeah. but you can't come do this shit over I'm, here. I tell you, Rome, I have no idea how in the hell you haven't stuck or got a real shot in the league. I, Thanks, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm you saying you, saying you don't nobody know how, don't nobody, don't nobody. <laughs> it ain't just you. You ain't the only one. <laughs> he one of the most elite players I've ever came across for real, for real. It ain't just Thanks, you. Bro. Listen, man. It ain't just you, bro. I appreciate that love from all y'all, but I'm like preparing to really tell my story and how fucked up this shit got. You bro. need to for real. It's they bad. need to. Bro. It's bad, bro. They need like, to. It's, it's not even. Yeah, people just it's to a point where motherfuckers like they, they had to make up some shit because of what was done. Like you know what I'm saying? So it's, things start to follow me like on some I hear terrible person or he's not coachable. But it's like I never had 
a coach saying that shit about me. Yeah. So a lot of these things ain't coaching. If we're talking about that, let's go and get all of Jerome Randall's coaches from during that time leading up to the NBA and ask them. Let's talk. Let's talk about it. Let's have a conversation. But they're not willing to do that because once things are already set in stone, where they didn't already created that narrative of you, they're going to stick to yeah. that shit. Yeah. I tell everybody that now, though, when you get to the league, though, however you got to the league, be yourself. That's how you, that's how you going to be yourself. Don't let them trick you out your spot to be, I got to the league. Yeah, everybody, when you Basically, get to the league, the I'm scoring, I'm doing this, this, and the third. I got to the league, I'm thinking, damn, I'm supposed to pass. Shit, Russ open or whoever open, I got to get him the ball. I ain't get to the league doing that shit, so I got a label. Once you get that label or that title, uh, he's just going to pass this motherfucker. He's just a passer, and he's going to play defense. Do this motherfucker yeah. if you want to. <laughs> Shoot this motherfucker if you want to. Oh, God, I was with I was with the best of them, KD, Russ. Shoot this motherfucker if you want to. Yeah. yeah. I got somewhere for you. Come on. Come kick uh, it with me. Man. Come kick it with me over here. And like I that. had to learn that because I'm like, damn, I tricked myself out the whole I tricked myself out the whole, but I ain't no ain't nobody tell me this shit though. I just had to learn on the fly though. So yeah. that's, now everywhere that's I go, worst, that's now I'm about to beat thing, me. Man. I don't care where I go overseas, this me. You ain't gonna change it, you ain't gonna I ain't gonna no, bro, nothing. I swear it's crazy how moms is trying to dim your light so bad, man. Even when you were trying to even when you were saying it, I'm like, damn, that sound dead on me. I said, damn, like, I swear, like, I never even knew. I never, I swear, bro, I ain't, I'm a great, I'm coachable. I, I listen, you feel me? But at the same time, I know who the fuck I am, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. I, I bring on the court. I never knew, like, like, that my energy, you feel me? Like, me just being, like, out loud, you feel me? Confident, you know what I mean? I'm not yeah, that really. Fuck people, that fuck people, that rub people the wrong You're way. Not, you got to understand. You're not for everybody. Yeah. You're not for every that's, team. That's You're a not hard for every coach. Up, man. You when you in the look moment. At, prime example, you look at Jimmy Butler. When he was in Minnesota, they hated him. He was the worst motherfucker in the world. Yeah. That's because they had a soft culture. The culture that he was around was very soft. Especially the moment he coming, went over that? there to Miami, yeah. he's around strong-minded. You know what I'm saying? IQ this what it's going to be. Yeah, we're going to get it He's out the tomorrow. the best motherfucker ever because you have to make sure that you end up in a right situation that basically, you know what I'm saying, that's, that's good for your personality, that literally caters to the player that you are. Mm. If you ain't got, if you ain't around that, you, you're terrible. You're terrible. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. That's a fact. That's, a fact. Yeah, that's, a, that's where you come to learn, where you come to learn how to, like, Damn, they're basically con control the controllables almost now. Yeah, that's nigga. That's it's crazy. You know, that's I just had that conversation yesterday with my motherfucking therapist. And that, that's so hard as a hooper because it's like we kind of be in our we we be in control of our own destiny, but we really don't though. Like we really don't to a certain extent because I can we are our whole career is looked upon and basically controlled by some. Somebody liking us mm. or liking our game or you know what I'm saying this that the third and if you don't like my game or if you don't like my personality or whatever the case is now you're in control of my whole career all now Ru Russ, Russ was like a good dude like a good vet though Russ was like to this day I can call him and be big bro like he gonna be you be you how, yeah. how you get to where you I love you. Stand on how you. I love stand Russ. on that. But you, I swear, I swear to this day, I can call him anytime. Like, bro, like, like man, this ain't this. This ain't this ain't whatever. Hey, man, my, my, how the fuck you get over there? <laughs> yeah, doing, I was doing me. He, he actually do you stand on that? Don't go for don't don't go for none. Don't go for none of that. Yeah. When I get to where I got to go, he a real one. He's yeah, definitely, Russell, real. He's, he's, real. he's, he's he, definitely he, misunderstood, bro. He's misunderstood. That's why people. That's that's. But that's why it's always something with him. Even when he with the fan shit, he gonna stand on. He gonna stand on whatever he stand on with anybody. And that's one person I saying like, damn, he didn't act like he act like me. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, he runs. He this this Westbrook, but he act like like he act like us though. Like he stand on business every time. And he should, bro. Like, I mean, people feel like they can say whatever they want to say, man. Motherfuckers at the end of the day, from that shit. You ain't, we ain't letting people just talk to us and disrespect us any type of way. So why? What's the point? What's the point? So my G just stood on business the other day. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But like he said though, like he, we don't let we don't let we don't let a a, a a regular or whoever do it where we from. So why am I gonna let this other motherfucker do it? Nah, yeah, nah, it ain't. You can talk to me. You can coach me up. We from though, man. We not just. A lot of us don't get me wrong. We love hooping. It's it's fun and games and this that the third. But a lot of us, this our lives on the line with this shit for real. You know what I mean? Like growing up, it's not we're not taught. You know what I'm saying? It's a bunch of different avenues for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? In the hood and trend, it's like it's only it's sports or music. You know what I mean? Like it's either you gonna hoop yeah. football or you either gonna make some music or whatever the case is for real. Like so, a lot of us growing up like. We are really putting a lot of pressure on ourselves in a way. You know what I mean? Like, I, put a, I personally put a lot of pressure on myself growing up to the point where, shit, it felt like certain mistakes was like fractures in my bones. Damn, but there. Like, you had to. Like, I mean, it's nothing wrong with putting pressure on yourself because that pressure uh, made you who yeah. you are. Like, you get yeah. what I'm saying? So, like, at the end of the day, I think we all, in some capacity, put pressure on ourselves. I had to put pressure on myself because if I didn't, I would have been stagnant. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I yeah. wasn't trying to be stagnant in no way, shape, or form. The eyes was against me because my stature. You know what I'm saying? That's the only reason why people didn't want to give a motherfucking opportunity yeah. because they feel like, they think, they believe that, you know what I'm saying? This is what it is. It's like, yeah. nah. You I was know saying, what I'm saying? Like, you got to go from here. Bro. It's the talent and it's here. You can't look at a, a person's stature and be like, ah, he ain't going to be able to survive. Motherfuckers surviving consistently at this stature. Y'all just got to understand and give people an opportunity to do that. And now yeah. they starting to do that more. And now they see that a lot of shorties, you know what I'm saying, they got game and they being successful in that league. You get what I'm yeah. saying? So it's yeah. all about giving people the opportunity, man. It ain't about the hype because you look at the tallest motherfuckers in the league get post up. Like, <laughs> think about it. it they ain't. used to talk about, you know what I'm saying, oh, man, he's going to get posted up. The tallest motherfuckers in the league get posted up. Let's keep it a buck. Yeah, uh, that, definitely. Hey, I watched the seen, other day. We just seen <laughs> Wimby try to post up Chris Paul or whoever tried yeah. to post up Chris Paul <laughs> just, just a little bit, just a couple weeks ago. <laughs> come on. That shit dead. Man. Come on, this shit dead. Like, come on. You got to show me, sir. Come on. Back you 19. I'm 30, sir. You about to think you about to bro. put me on this block? Come on. Not nowhere. That shit dead. We just seen it. I just seen Win. it too many times. I'm not saying you ain't, you ain't gonna score, but nigga, at some point, nigga, that shit, that shit is dead. And then also, man, what I think one of the biggest problems too, they they recycle the same garbage talent in the NBA to me for real. Mm -hmm. Like you can, they get so many chances, it don't make no sense hey, for real, for real. And it's all, it's all, it, like how you said, the 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 political and the bit, that shit all the business, bro. Like Once even you when you're like, yeah, I ain't get this, this, and the third. That's cool. Motherfuckers know what's going on. They just, you just ain't in that. You just ain't. You just ain't get blessed to be. You know what I mean, I, even for I, me, I, like I ain't. I ain't get blessed to be. Y'all yeah, got drafted. That wasn't really. Ah, okay. You got you drafted. Got That's drafted. all that I mean. Right. I can hold my. I can put my hat on there. Okay, you got drafted. I ain't got shit to show for for real. That's like, overseas wise. Yeah, I bust my ass. I had to do what I had to do to. You know what I mean, but. Man, like, that shit don't be, that shit all yeah. political. Oh, I like him or I owe him a favor from two years ago. So I need to get this player. I'm going to get this player uh, a chance before you just because. This is how it works. This is how it works. Better whatever. The better film, the better stats, whatever the case may be. They don't even give a fuck about no film. They don't give a fuck about <laughs> I owe him. I owe you <laughs> this favor from last year. I'm about to give you, yeah, yeah. He got to play. Why he got to play? Shit, yeah, because I owe him his favor. It's just, that's just how that shit works. No, that's just how it works. Like, it's a lot of insiders that, like, the outside fan base don't really see and understand with this game. Like, a lot of them be asking, like, why certain players still at home? Uh, 
why this and that. Damn, he good as hell. Why he ain't get a shot with the league or why he ain't blah, blah, blah. Man, like, this shit is so much more than just hooping for real, for real, when you get to a certain point. Like, it's. I love, I love, I love being in the league, but I ain't gonna lie. Overseas is just more, I mean, I can keep, I can keep it 100 with him. You feel me? Like, in the league, if I would have said something crazy, the motherfucker looked at me crazy. Who the fuck is you talking to? <laughs> next. I'm going to get the next motherfucker here that's going to do something that don't say nothing and shut up and sit back. <laughs> yeah, it it must have been different from you because, nigga, they want to fuck with me overseas. I was a nigga knocking on the door. If they ain't pay my bread, I wasn't playing. Oh, 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 oh no, 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 no. Oh, oh listen. Hey, that's what. That's the whole yeah. number. I got, hey, I got to bring it. Yeah. We got to figure something out because I got to get you. Yeah, I got to get, I got to get you over here. I tell them, they, my teammates know me. No pay, no play. I get the, I don't know hey, shit. I don't remember nothing. either. I don't know nothing about oh, nothing. You, for, you ain't paying. I'm not playing. I'm not practicing. I ain't doing he didn't, shit. He didn't talk to me before. He 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 know no pay no play. I don't know shit. I don't know nothing. If my yeah. shit ain't no time, all this shit go out the window. What basket? Who you said what play? I'm lying with. A Throw this bitch out of bounds. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I lost it. But Mike, Mike say he going. Mike say he dealing with the same shit right now. Look. Who, Mike? Uh, yeah. Mike McCall. That's my boy. He say, but he they, they but, say. But, but but I ain't gonna lie. It, it, it be certain situations you get put in that you be like, ah, oh, damn, I should play, bro. I don't give a fuck if I'm if if it's the game day. I didn't did that. The hot. I didn't did in the Euro League. I didn't did it. Yeah. And hold on, I went to halftime cam, went to go look at my shit. My shit ain't hit. Oh no play, no play. Ah. Oh, yeah. What hurt? I don't know. You the physio, figure it out. My whole body hurt. Figure that shit, shit out. Figure it out. I'm hurt. I stand on that. I'm not playing. I'm not fucking playing with them, bro. Like I don't fuck around. I stand, with my buddy. I stand on that. I'm too far away from home to even for for even to, to play like that, fuck yeah. around, funny, yeah. And that. they don't know nobody's situation. They you don't, don't know, know what you doing with what your I money. What I gotta go through, yeah, I, man. You don't know what I'm doing, but you gotta play with my money like that, nah. I feel like they wouldn't care that much anyway, for real, for real. Yeah. I, no hey, pay, no hey, play. I bet you I was they get it. Hey, listen, I was going knocking on the fucking door. <laughs> I wasn't playing. <laughs> hey, they hated me. I wasn't playing. <laughs> they was like Randall. Don't worry. You get your money. They I call. say, yeah. And when I, when I get my shit, I'm going to play. No, no worries. No problem. No, no problem, Randall. Like, everything. It's a problem. Like, this is not important. It's a problem. This is not important. It's a problem. You know? It's a big-ass problem. <laughs> hey, I, yeah. My mind hurt. <laughs> Yo, mind hurt. Yeah. My shit hurt. My shit hey. hurt. <laughs> that mean my hey, phone. Bro, I got a question for you, though, too, bro. But, um, so I know you done did with a lot of like I'm, i want to use the word negligence i guess you feel me <laughs> when it comes to you know what i'm saying this game and i know what type of work that you put in for real for real you know like how you ended up i guess like, like what's some lessons you just learned over time for real for real that kept your mental on track you know what i'm how the fuck is you, you like how you is now cause yeah you, you know what whatever you you then uh if, if i'm gonna be i'm gonna keep it a buck I had to use, I didn't know that I was going through depression. Mm. I'm going to just be honest. Yeah. I didn't know. I had no idea because I used basketball as my, my drug. It was really like a drug to me. Like everything, like when I first got on here, the first thing y'all said was, man, like your work ethic. Bro, if I didn't work as much as I did, I probably would have been dead. Mm. I'm going to just keep it a buck. Like that's why I, stayed on the court like i literally needed that shit just to breathe and survive because that was my only outlet i didn't know no other way i didn't know no other way to get through the shit that i was going through mentally like you get what i'm saying so it was like i became numb to it but it was really hurting me the way that i was using basketball i felt like i was doing it the right way because i wasn't hurting nobody you know yeah. what i'm saying it was just more so me putting the work in so i'm like i'm cool but mentally it was fucking me up it was fucking me up so 
I use and, that shit as a and as what a tool. aspects was it really like messing you up like at home, family or what was, uh, was it like? Um, health wise, yeah. yeah. Are you okay? Like I, I was dealing with some serious kidney issues, like serious. You know what I'm saying? Like, like just health wise, I would say at home in a sense, like you know what I'm saying too. But just how I dealt with situations is like I had a short fuse. Yeah. Yeah. For people like yeah. I wasn't do snapping that. on you, yeah. but it was do just it, like do, to the point where get like that. It do I, get can, like I can just separate myself. Like I can separate. So a lot of people be like, "Man, Ron don't fuck with nobody." That's because I've been hurt too much. So I'd rather not get close to a motherfucker. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And just kind of keep you at a distance. I don't know what yeah. you're about. If the closest person did some dirty shit to me, what makes me think that your ass? You not gonna. Shit? You ain't gonna do it. Yeah, and I don't know you like that. You feel me? So it was like I knew. You ask anybody. Rome didn't smoke. Rome didn't drink. Rome didn't go to the club. Rome was at the gym. Yeah, yeah. Cause I knew I knew what I needed for myself. Like you get what I'm saying? I knew I needed that shit. You feel me? But 2020, I'm telling y'all this. I couldn't couldn't use basketball as a tool no more. I got weak. And, yeah, I and that's when I tore my ACL. I know exactly what you mean too. For I real. got weak, bro. Like, and it was like. That morning, that morning was a dark ass morning. I remember that shit. I just came from Australia and I got to Spain. I am sorry, I gotta get off live. Boy, y'all about to, boy, listen. Huh? Ooh, I'm pissed. I gotta go. Hey, we going, hey, hey, Samaj, bro. We can, we can figure something out. Come back on later if we can. Yeah, I'm gonna holler at y'all, boys. I gotta go do this garbage ass interview. I'm about to walk out like Marshawn Lynch. I'm gonna fuck with y'all, boys. <laughs> All right, brother. I'll tap you in. All right, brother. Y'all, boy, be safe, hey, brother. Yes, sir. Rome. Yes, but Rome though, hey, like, so when you say you couldn't, you feel me, uh, use that no more. You know what I mean? Like, what do you mean you ran out of? You feel me? Like the strength a little bit? Do you mean like your why got weaker? It was just imagine being fucking. Just imagine being on drugs. A person that's on drugs, right? Right, right. Just imagine being stressed out and being in a situation where you actually need it. You had all the resources, all the resources to get it, to get your drug, right? And for whatever reason, you don't got that shit no more. Mm. Mm. You feel that me? Withdrawal, that withdrawal. I had I had all the strength to just go out and play. I used my opponent. They didn't know how personal the shit was. But I used them as a way for me to get through the shit that I was going through. Competition is what I was driven by. Is yeah. what got me through. Going at them niggas, oh God. <laughs> got me through my times. Did it work in my favor all the time? No, because certain days was worse than others. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it was like, understand, that's still beating up your mind. That's still beating up your body. That's still fucking with your health. Yeah. And I did it for so so long it's almost like if you sit and shit so long it stops stinking mm. i was mm. so numb literally to what i was really doing to myself that that morning that's when i literally hit a wall i'm like what the fuck is going on i don't feel like myself and i knew something went right take take us into some of them inside thoughts though like like you you know what i'm them real thoughts you know what i'm talking about man you feel me where you it was, I didn't even know if, I, to be honest, I didn't really have them no more. Mm. I didn't have no inside thoughts because when I was. you cut that off, that's crazy, man. When you it, cut it was, that off, bro, it was, that's crazy. I was like, what thoughts did I need when I knew what I needed to do? Yeah. I was, yeah. I was so fucking programmed to wake up. To be there before everybody, hour and a half, two hours before practice. I'm in the gym. Damn man, he got a, he full blown sweat. I actually, to my teammates, this is what I did every fucking day, every day. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But they didn't understand that. So, literally, sun come up, boom, roam up. I'm at the gym. I didn't know no other way. So I didn't have no, no inside thoughts. It was just like my mind. It was like people say muscle memory. It was mental memory. It yeah. was all type of type all type of memory that was going on with me like i couldn't i couldn't survive without it yeah yeah people don't understand that man how deep you could fall into that uh I mean, into was, that hole for it real. was deep, deep i was deep into that shit man like people didn't, when y'all see y'all see that shit people that <clears throat> like damn that motherfucker work his ass off i needed to nigga. 
I needed to. For your own health. For my own, nigga. And, for real, like. And then I, I just couldn't. 2020, nigga, I hit a wall. It was like I did it for so long. I did it. That pandemic really fucked with a lot oh, yeah, of people, it, man. It hit. When I tore my ACL, the pandemic hit the next day. Mm. So. Cut the world down. I don't on understand. You. Like, that shit hit in a time where it was almost like God. I said, okay, sit the fuck down. Yeah, Let, slow down. Like, just think about that. It happened at the time where the pandemic was the next fucking day. It was like, okay, I'm going to sit you down for a minute. All right? And then pandemic was going on for six, seven months. So all of my, you know, my work was doing, you know, going on during the, during the pandemic. So I didn't really lose shit for real. Yeah. And I got back in seven months. Yeah, I remember. I remember vividly, actually. I remember that that whole journey, actually, for real. You feel me? So it was, it was like, nigga, I was back in seven months, like, working my ass off, but I was in a dark place the first two months. Mm. Everything went dark for me. I didn't sleep for, like, literally no sleep for two weeks. I yeah. thought I was going to fucking die. That's how bad it was. Like, I couldn't fall asleep. Like, my mind was racing. Like, I was... I was in a bad space, bro. Like, yeah, and you, you say you, you, you don't do any type of, no drinking, no drugs, no, no anything almost. So, I can understand definitely how tough that position was for you in 2020, for real. That pandemic put a lot on a lot of people, mental for real, especially athletes, because a lot of us didn't know what the fuck to do without being able to get in the gym or. Uh, workout or schedule, you know what I'm saying? Because we so routine based for real, uh, with a lot of stuff. Like a lot, I, even myself, you know what I'm saying? Personally, I was shit looking around like, shit. What what are we supposed to? What's what are we supposed to do? So just imagine during that time, I picked up a drink. I'd be a fucking drunk right now. Yeah. For sure. Just imagine if I actually during that time when I was going through what I was going through, I actually picked up a drink. And I started drinking at that time. Nigga, I will be a fucking drunk right now. Because I, I applaud you for that mental strength, for real. Huh? I said, I applaud you for that strength mentally, for real. Like, yeah. Woo. So, I ain't gonna lie. I'm somebody, you feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a little more spiritual person, for real, for real. But you know what I'm saying? I understand and I go through, you know what I'm saying? A lot of the mental battles, which a lot of this shit, man, a lot of this stuff is really... 90% mental, you know what I mean? For real, for real. Like, majority of the battle is shit right there, for real, for real. It won't even be in reality, you know what I'm saying? Or something right in front of you, for real. A lot of the battles is right up here, for real, in your head. So, like, that's why I said I applaud you, man, because for real, I know a lot of people, for real, who would have definitely picked up something to cope with. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or been like, damn, this hoop shit not for me. You know what I'm saying? And went on, went on on the corner or some shit or made some, you, bro. you know what i'm saying so much different. running through my mind at that time nigga i ain't know where i was going to end up <laughs> hey but wrong though how did you how did you persevere through that though like what made you what was that moment for you where it really clicked like no i gotta shake back man this yeah, ain't what, me you know what was what I mean? that resilience I didn't, work too, for real. I didn't work too hard you know what i mean you've been on my podcast before you didn't told your story like i didn't come from the church you know what i'm saying the upbringing i had like i just i can't go out like like, what was yeah. that moment for you that kind of was like the kick in your ass you really needed to push forward? Put it like this. We, we all have God inside of us. Mm -hmm. We're God. He's in every everybody. Yeah. Like, you get what I'm saying? I grew I up in a church. The thing. We all we all need to understand that. You know, you have the good side. You have the bad side. You have the spiritual. You have all these things inside of you. You choose which one you want to be. I knew that I was strong-minded strong enough to know, okay, I can rob this thing or I can stay over here and do the right thing. Yeah. You wake up with a chance and a choice every fucking day. And you literally, even during the toughest times, you can be like, you know what? I'm going to stay solid or I'm going to go over here and do something fucked up. Mm -hmm. That's really up to you. I, I literally allowed myself to be in a dark space. Mm -hmm. I allowed allow myself to be there. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I didn't have to. But with all the shit, it was like every inch of pain and depression it started pouring out of me during that time when i was fucking hurt like it was like everything was being let out awake man you get what i'm saying it was like i was healing 
without even knowing I was fucking healing. And I'm still healing. That's another that's another conversation that a lot of people don't talk about. Uh the strength it takes to heal within chaos. Oh man, it's the toughest a lot of thing to do. People don't know how to do that. A lot of people don't talk about that for real. Toughest for real. thing to do. Like you like how? You know what I'm saying? You got all this shit going on around you and you're trying to heal, you're trying to be better, but then it's something else come. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Fuck with you. And then it's a trigger for what you're going through that can literally knock you off your square. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now you back to where you were, you know what I'm saying, before you were trying to heal. It's like, it's some fucked up shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I knew those first two months, it was like, yeah, okay. I knew what I was doing to myself. I knew that I allowed myself to be there, but I was there. And it was so much, man, man, y'all don't understand what the fuck <laughs> I was doing that time, nigga. It was everybody turned against me when I got hurt, nigga. It, it mm. always do. It be feeling like that, too. When I say everybody, I mean every fucking then, body turned against me when I got hurt. You what you mean, though, Rome? Did they just feel like you gave, like, did they feel like, oh, Rome ain't gonna be the same, or was it just, yeah. like, nobody checked in? No, my mom, you, like, that shit. my mom was like, listen, because my agent turned this back on me, too. Mm. He mm. was, like, the starting... He, he was the... He was the, the the person who basically turned that knob and like kicked everything off. He jump started the whole fucking thing yeah. of being in a dark place because me and him was like brothers. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And my mom told me he was like, you know what? And you tr trusted he, him though. You feel I, me? I trusted him like a motherfucker. Like yeah. he's like my brother. Trusted him. Like you know what I'm yeah, saying? I already like, know. We did good business together. Like nigga, we were like that. You feel me? And literally, my mom was like. He did that, and it's a story behind it, but I'm going to say it on my own shit. It's <laughs> deep, and it's really some fucked up shit when y'all hear yeah. it. Uh, she was like, he did that because that was his way out. He was trying to find a way out because he don't he, he didn't know that if you was going to be the same no yeah, more. He didn't want so to, it was easy to for him to, to find some shit, get up out of there, you know what I'm saying? And then he started to tarnish my fucking name in Australia. And you made a hustle like, about that for real. That's the wild part. Don't like think about that, nigga. I'm I'm all time. I'm all I'm everything out there. Like you get what yeah. I'm saying? Like yeah. not to be able to get a job there. Like you can't really fathom that shit. Like you get what I'm saying? So when that all that shit happened, it was just like, okay, I see. Now, now that light switch, boom, turn back on. I'm like, wake the fuck up, go get your ass in the gym and go work. I was a madman for five straight fucking months. Yeah. And that's how I was able to get back in seven fucking months, bro. Yeah. Because I I got tired of the bush. I got tired of what he did. Like, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, me? I ain't going to be the same? In what life? In what life? life? Yeah. But the kicker was, <laughs> the fucked up thing about it was like, I don't know if it was God. Like, I really don't know. But it had to be. Everything is him. When mm -hmm. I came back, I was faster, stronger, everything. Mm. I signed a big deal in in in, in, uh, in uh in Ukraine because I got the passport. The war hit, boom! Oh my god, the time and the shit just be so. so man, that's like, one of my biggest struggles right happened. now, man. I, I left. I went to Spain. Went back to Spain. Matter of fact, when I tore my ACL, the team offered me a contract for the next year. The day after. I tore my ACL, and I only played three quarters with them. So they yeah, was like, man, "Damn, man. I'm rocking the fucking crowd. I got the crowd going crazy. They loving me for three quarters. Only three quarters I've been there." And they like, "No, no, 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 no. I don't care about no fucking ACL. I want them here. I'm, I'm, I'm literally offering you a contract for next year. You do your, 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 your uh, rehab and everything here. Boom, you got a contract. I'm like, fuck, shit." Man, Rome, I swear to God, I want to dive so deep right now, especially for the younger, young, young Yo. kids. They need to learn this type of resilience for real, for real. It no was facts. crazy. So it was like, it was to a point where I didn't think that I would mentally be okay with being in Spain the entire time and not being around my actual family. Mm -hmm. So I didn't take the deal. Uh, but once I got back, you know, um, I left. I went to Spain, man. And 
and I started to build that confidence again. Like I was scared to play. I was afraid. You know, I thought I was gonna get hurt again. Yeah. Um, and I have a video of me like just like, you know what, fuck it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just push that shit to the limit. Boom, I pushed that motherfucker full court, three seconds, got a layup. And that was like the turning point for me. You get what I'm saying? And it was like, yeah. okay, now people know that I'm back. Signed a big contract in, in Ukraine. Yeah, and get the your back against the wall where you either go. Feel me? Like up, shut the fuck and up. Go home. I'm like, okay, wrong. <laughs> it's time now. Like you back. War hit. Boom. All yeah. that money gone. Bam. Go somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's that like me, and I could never I could never get too. back to what they remember me being because I never had a full year of actually showing that I'm back. Yeah. People kept yeah. asking about my ACL, is he healthy? Is that and that shit started to fucking piss me off. You get what I'm saying? So mentally, like, I was like, you know what? Fuck this shit, man. I ain't got the love for it no more. I didn't even have the love for the game when I got injured. During that time, I was already out of it, but yeah. I needed to prove to myself that I can get back. So and the love for the game was already that, gone. You know because just throughout the years, just getting you just getting beat up, broken down, you feel yeah. me? Taking so many L's. People don't understand how much, like, shit, you can, you can be as resilient as you want to, for real. Man, you continue to keep taking L after L after L, it beat on you for real a little bit. Right. Fucking me up. So I wasn't getting back to, to really play to prove. Like I was getting back for myself because I know I needed to heal. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And I didn't need to I didn't want to stay in that dark place. You know what I'm saying? But then again, you know, look, piece of me like, you know, a well, fuck you, nigga. Like, what you mean? I ain't gonna get back. I ain't gonna be the same. No, you and, know you gotta tell yourself in your head. You feel nah, me? Like you, nah, nigga, nah, nigga, nah, like you can't tell me that I ain't the same motherfucker. Like, you will like, we get to that point, bro, where you, this nigga you is nice. I was, I was on that type of time, yeah, bro, but like, the time what? after that, everything, I feel like God was kind of just like, okay, you did enough. You don't have to prove. And the, the best advice that I, I, I received from a mentor of mine, it was last year, this year, because, you know, I had some selfish cats on my team, like in, uh, in, in Africa when I was playing. And I was telling him about it. He started laughing. I'm, I'm getting irritated because I'm serious. I love to win. I want to win. Yeah. He say, <laughs> you really think this is about you, huh? Ted stopped being about you a long time ago. Just mm. Listen to that, bro. Yeah. It, it ain't about you no more. I, yeah, that's how it is for me. I, I feel that. That shit real, hit me hard because understand, I'm in, I'm, in my element i'm competing this is what i want to do so i'm all about how can i help the team win how can i help the team win how can i help the team win he say it has nothing to do with you anymore get out of your own fucking way it's about what you're about to be doing after basketball you need to be mm. helping the motherfucker that's pissing you off and positioning him to be the best version of himself. It's not fucking about you. Mm. You think I, I wanted to hear that a shit? Feel to swallow, boy. Yeah. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. You think I wanted to hear that shit? Not at all. No player wanted to hear nothing Man, like that. But he, he was right. He was right. End up winning the championship. I walked away from the game. Now, uh, to talk about that, Rome, I know that's kind of like a hard thing to really process is really walking away from something that you spent your whole life doing do you st obviously i know you probably still do miss the game you know what i'm saying but are you really are you really happy with the with the choice you made of, of walking away from the game and is it is it the possibility that you can come back yeah i'm not i'm not happy about it because i'm not happy about you, it i think about it every day i think about it every single day mm. and um, um I'm not happy about it because I don't feel like that was me who made the decision. But at the end of the day, the right person did make the decision. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's God yeah. made the decision because I'm following the signs. You know what I'm saying? Everything aligned for me to just be like, you, you can keep doing this shit and I'm going to keep putting your ass in this position mm -hmm. that you're not going to like. I'm going to keep putting you here. Like, you're not going to like it because it's time for you to fucking transition and move away from the shit. You know what I'm saying? You've done everything that you needed to do. So it's time for you to start doing something else. 
I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. Like, because, nigga, like, I have not taken a step back at all. Like, I could go and fuck shit up. You can put me on the NBA court right now. I will fuck them up right now today. Yeah. Like, no, no exaggeration. Yeah. Like, no exaggeration. So, at the end of the day, it's like me knowing that it fucks with me. Like, it fucks with me. Every day. Yeah, that's a hard pill to swallow, especially when you're healthy and you know you easily can go still do what you do. You feel me? Yeah. I, yeah, so, I, you, so, help, you helping me out so much right now, for real, right. for real. A lot of people, bro. A lot of people, bro, with that. Hey, Rome, so, like, kind of like what you're doing now, like, giving back to the youth, you know what I mean? you posting the videos of kids working on their game, what they could be better at. Is that... Is that kind of like your peacemaker for you right yeah. now? I know you said you're still healing, you're still going through your situations mentally and just, you know, trying to process everything. Is that really your healing for you right now? You know what I'm saying? Like, is that is what that... I have? That's what it is. But you know, I'm 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 learning to heal and pray, like to not just let that be my only outlet. So, you know, you my healing is through the youth and through helping people. Like, you get what I'm saying? So it's like. I want my legacy to be not from what I've done, but from things that I do. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want it to be, you know, oh, man, he was a great basketball player, but he was a terrible fucking person. Like, I don't want that. I love it. You know, it's yeah. easy for people to just be like, oh, man, he was a dope-ass basketball player. You know how many basketball players out here like that? People don't talk yeah. about nothing about them. Thanks. You look at when Steph Curry finished, they're going to talk about how great he was on the court. A great person. Yeah. Always had have been a great person. That's, you get what I'm saying? I what people feel about Le LeBron, he's showing that he's a great person. He's right. showing it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Family guy. I don't, don't nobody know what's going on behind the, by, behind the scenes, but this is what it is. You get what I'm saying? You want a legacy of that. Basketball is a tool. Yeah. The position you do for everything else. You get what I'm saying? If that's the only thing that people remember you as, that's not that's for me. I don't mm. give a fuck if you remember me as a basketball player. Yeah. But once you go do your research, you're like, damn, that motherfucker was dope. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But what you he, talking about? Yeah, it does. He, day is yeah. just like, man, that's man, that's a fucking great dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's what I want to be remembered as. I'm not the perfect. I'm not a perfect person, bro. Everybody make mistakes. You get what I'm saying? Everybody make bad choices. But that's what I want my legacy to be. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I. It's just like I'm just listening to him, you know what I'm saying? And it, man, Rome like talking some talk, bro. Luckily, you know what I'm saying? I did I dive deep into my spirituality, so I kind of can understand and I know where you're coming from. But uh, as younger me and a lot of the younger players, you know what I'm saying? I just know that, that that's like something that they you can't comprehend that for real. Like, I, I, that's something that I don't even know. Like, you got to go through it to grow through it for real. Got to. Like, I don't even know how to even tell them to deal with something like that, though, for real, especially in this game, because, like, your career could be shorter now, today, than it could be in the past, for real, for real, now. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of, you feel me, uh, different things that could harm your career, that could harm your mentality, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to the game, for real. So, I, it's, man, I think, like, when people go through, and uh, I feel like this is what I'm learning, um, when people are going through situations when they're looking for you for advice and shit like that like you know if they're going through some hardships or whatever the case is and they need advice people try to give them advice on the hardship you get mm -hmm. what i'm saying it's like of the situation but yeah. it's an underlying issue and why you even allowing the shit to get to you like you know what i'm saying it's like i try to help people in other ways like i, I know it's a politically correct thing to say it's like man just stay prayed up stay doing this stay doing you know what i'm saying it's like like, you know, what's happening? You feel like what's going on? What happened to you? Like, you know what I'm saying? How did it start? Like, how did that shit actually start for you to be where you are right now? Like, I'm learning that for myself. When I get on live and I talk, bro, I'm speaking from experience. And you I'm speaking not giving to you, you know, shit. I ain't thinking about a fucking a sermon every day or uh, writing some shit down. I'm telling you through experience. I'm telling you through the shit that I've actually been through that everybody go through. Yeah. Everything is the same. It's just different fucking scenarios, bro. Yeah, and they don't understand, bro, how passionate, you know what I'm saying, you is for real, for real. 
Like, man, Jay, Rome a passionate man. I'm trying to say when he's speaking and he hop on them lives random for real. That's no, all. it's passion because I understand what I, I just told y'all. I'm still healing. Yeah. I'm trying to get shit out so I don't have to keep that shit in. I kept yeah. it in for 15, 20, 25 fucking years, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I kept it in and like, and I kept it in because I knew how to get it out. I, I got it out on the court, but it wasn't yeah. really you know getting how, out of me. It, it you know was, how to get it out physically, but mentally yeah. it was still. It was I, still I, right there. I can get it out physically. You know what I'm saying? It was like, I'm beat, trying to beat down a wall that's not there. Yeah. But the wall, mm. that, that motherfucker is dinting. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't going nowhere. So the reason why it's didn't because I'm fucking competing. I'm really ditting that shit up because I'm fucking somebody up on the court. I'm ditting that motherfucker. But I can't get through that metal wall. I can't you break that motherfucker down. When you're doing that too, you low key like you tallying them up as wins almost. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When ultimately you still losing, losing for real. For real. Every time. Like so, so I, I win I, for a win in a basketball game is not an actual win in life. Like for me, it ain't no win mentally. You know what I'm saying? It kept me stagnant. You know what I'm saying? In the public eye, I was like, oh, he's this, he's that. But that's the fakest shit in the fucking world. Because mm. the moment things get bad, boom, they not going to be there. You know what I'm saying? So people look for validation from people that that's not really there for real. You know what I'm saying? They ain't there for real. You know what I'm saying? And I was looking for that, not even from people. Like, act, matter of fact, I never fucking look for that. Because I was never in that box. I never cared about the write-ups and everything that people said about me. I didn't give a fuck. I never cared. Only thing I cared about is lies. Don't lie on me. Thanks. Don't fucking lie on me, bro. Because I would give my fucking shirt off my back. I'd give my last to somebody that's in need. That's one thing that I was always able to do because of what I was going through. I can look outside of myself and care about somebody else. Yeah. But I can also be stubborn. You know what I'm saying? And if you fuck the, with me, wait, I don't no, that's want the easy, to fuck with you. That's the easy thing to do is to be stubborn and to not give back and not get his game to people. And uh, You know what I'm saying? That's the easiest thing to do is to focus on just you for real, for real. But when you know, like, a lot of stuff just get bigger than you and, like, man, one of the hardest things to do for real, that's one of the hardest things to do is to pour into something, you know what I'm saying, and pour into people who ultimately you you're not getting nothing in return from it or you're not Good. you know what I'm, you're not getting a return in that investment you know but spiritually you know what i'm saying when you help and you serve others you feel me it gets it come full circle you know what i'm saying it like it come for it come full circle it might not be the next day the next week the next month you know what i mean or whatever the case is but don't expect it, expect it. don't expect things to come it's like do it because that's just the person that you want to be. That's the thing that I've been struggling with from some personal shit that's going on. It's like, don't let nobody change the person that you are. Mm. I like the car. All I've been saying that and, for the past two and years. That, hey, listen, when I say that's the hardest fucking thing to do, boy, that shit is hard. That's forget spiritual forget, warfare. That's a give, spiritual warfare, I swear, man. Forgiving the unfair. You know how tough it is to forget an unfair? Like, nigga, that's tough. Yeah. That's tough, nigga. You know that's this shit of, unfair. You know this shit ain't right. But that's one of the things. Like, we want yeah. God to forgive us with every fucking thing that we've done, but we can't forgive somebody else. Because it's so easy to treat motherfuckers how you've been treated, for real. It's so easy. <laughs> listen, so bro. Easy. Listen, I'm telling you because, nigga, I ain't got it together. I don't have everything together, and I'm not sitting here promoting that I have it together. <laughs> yeah. I'm Matter of fact, nigga, I wanna I want everybody to heal at the same time. Let's heal together. Let's walk this fucking life together. Cause yeah. we don't all have it to have it together. <laughs> the problem is that need to have. everybody is looking for advice for people who got who's successful financially. They can I mean, they successful in business. They can't give you fucking relationship advice. Why are you <laughs> looking for that? You know, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's like like motherfuckers be looking for advice from people that have no expertise in none of that shit. Yeah. It's an image, wrong. It's an image. It's like, like, yo, like, stop asking for that shit, bro. Like, this is not the type of advice that you want because it's a politically correct thing to do. You want to know, like, yo, how did you get there, man? How did you get to the place where you were? How can I actually tell you that? Like, this is a real question. 
ask me that question. Like, Rome, how did you, how was you able to be successful in basketball? Oh, man. Yeah. Going to the gym and I put up 100 shots. Bro, I cannot fucking say that to you. You know why? <laughs> how can I say if, if you go and put up 100, a thousand fucking shots a day, you're going to be successful in basketball? Man, my struggles made me successful. Mm. The shit that I've been through made me successful in basketball. You know what I'm mean? saying? It's how you utilize yeah. the shit that you have from the things that you fucking been through. That's it. That's all. Yeah. Cause growing them them definitely mentally tough battles for real, especially growing yeah. up. You hear stuff like, Oh, you work hard, you know what I mean? You gonna get everything, you gonna get what you want, or no. you know what I mean? You hear stuff like don't that. Work like that. Yeah. It don't that, work like it, that. No, for real, for real. You learn that shit the hard way. Like, hold on, man, I'm going hard. I'm Everybody has work for what real. Do what they want to do. It's people out here that's rich that grew up with a silver spoon in their mouth and they still successful in their sport. It's because they found a way to still be motivated and still work hard, even with everything that they have. Yeah. You get what I'm mean? saying? And but you got a lot of parents out here and kids who's looking and seeing that it, this person is successful and they trying to follow the same remedy as this person have. It don't fucking work like yeah. that. Yeah, it man, I just was don't work like that. that you for can't real too. go and go to this trainer because he's training this person. And you not you gonna train the way that he's trained. He's going to get to wait. No, man, that ain't none of that. Nah, nah, bro. <laughs> nah for real. he will for real, like. Cause bro, for real, like, especially like, cause I just had my first daughter, you know what I mean? And like, it's a fine line, you feel me, between keeping it real and you know what I'm saying? Wanting them to dream chase, you know what I mean? Like, and I learned that growing up myself for real, for real. Like, it's a fine line for real. Like, you must be realistic in a sense, but not in a way like you shooting somebody's dreams down, but like, let's be real, bro. Just cause you see Chris Brickley working out all these players or something, just cause you get with him don't mean you know what I'm saying that he's gonna turn you into this you feel me type of player or something like this this be real stuff that people need to hear for real though because no me, and you, me and you can come from the same background and you can have more talent than me but I'll be more successful in you and your in, in our sport because you not handling your situation yeah better than I am. Mm. Sure. You're not handling your situ situation better than I am. I figured out a way to allow my situation to motivate me and keep me in the gym. Yeah. But your talent and your situation is putting you in a position where you like, man, I got talent. I ain't got to fucking do this. I'm good. I'm better than everybody. And D. Will was talking about that. He asked me what a question like that. Uh, what The question you had asked me was about like how uh, Chicago players go to universities and they struggle, you know what I'm saying? They, they struggle tremendously sometimes, for real, for real, with like the discipline and the 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 structure and the, you know what I'm saying? They hit a real wall and want to come back home and get into the shit that you feel me. All these per people who are already done, basically done settled with their life, you feel me? That's 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 a and that's whole crazy episode. <laughs> Man, yeah, we were just talking about that. That entire that fucking there, episode. Like, you yeah. gotta stand, and this not just happening right now. This has been happening since I was in high school. Yeah. yeah. You get what I'm saying? And then entering in college. I think um Chicago is like a place like no other. No other. Chicago is like no other. The the culture of Chicago is to literally like Put you in this box where you feel like you can't survive outside of Chicago. Yeah, like you get what I'm saying. And it's it's it, and a lot of ha it, it has to do with the people that's in Chicago and how they operate and how they show love and how they deal with situations. You get what I'm saying. So it's easy for you to get caught up in those and in, in that space mentally of just feeling like you can't survive like outside yeah. of that shit. So a lot of people leave Chicago. And they don't know how to fucking take take criticism. Nigga, I was him. I was that person. I'm trying to tell you I was him. But I also, once again, had a chance and a choice. I knew what I, I needed to do, even though I was Chicago all fucking day. I knew uh, what I wanted. You out, and you I out, stayed in that space. State, you rep that shit hard, boy. I'm telling huh? you, when you. I said, when you when you leave Chicago, it's funny what? how hard you rep. You rep that, that shit like it's no other, man. You rep hey, that what's shit the, like, 
What's the saying? You could take Rome out of Chicago, but you can take Chicago out of Rome. <laughs> well, I swear. <laughs> take Chicago out of Rome. I'm just gonna let you know. I don't give a fuck if I don't live there or not. It's a reason why I don't live there. It's a reason. Hey, Rome, talk about too how like when you do come from here, how other people in other states and stuff they try to put you in this box and lay like you feel me like they know what goes on in our city and like they try to literally like box you into that, that category almost for i real. mean because i mean we ain't the only one who know what's going on in chicago people on the outside they know what's going on too so a lot of times they don't really want to give you a chance for real like they don't they don't understand that you know you can come out of there and still be a good fucking dude yeah you get what I'm saying? For, they don't. for example, like how they try to do D Rose. You know what Facts. I'm saying? Like, I mean, just look at him, man. Like the the purest motherfucker you gonna meet. Like, yeah, the purest yeah. motherfucker you gonna meet. Then they know he bang bang for real. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna meet him, but he is Chicago at the end of the day. He's still Chicago, but he's the purest fucking person yeah. you're yeah. gonna fucking meet. Yeah, his growth has been off to get to where he is. You get what I'm his saying? Growth. But it's like. That's Great. what it is. But to even say something about him, just look at the the space he's in right now, bro. But they can't say nothing. Know about him since we were seven and to see how fucking knowledgeable he is right now. The best, best fucking shit ever. I don't care about nothing that man's done in basketball. I know yeah, how yeah. great he is. And I think, yeah, definitely. I think definitely. That's how I look at it, too, with him. Like, the growth that that man done can't. Crazy. I don't even think about it when it comes to hooping no more, for real, for real. And as much as he's done for, for us, for real, and, like, all of that, like, man, I don't even think about the hoop side of D-Rose no more, for real. Like, that man is so intelligent and wise, for real. Like, the growth, the things that you feel me he had to deal with, the, all of that, like, that's the stuff at the end of the day that really matters for real. Just, just imagine, just think about that. Like when he got injured, he couldn't get through that shit. Was, was he somebody that helped you out when you was dealing with your injury? Nah, nope. I put my, myself in the box. Like I ain't allow nobody to help me. E I ain't allow nobody yeah. to help me. Like I didn't want any so outside. You, I, you was fine that whole day, and I, I, I get. I, yeah. I didn't want nobody to help me. I didn't want any outside um, advice about shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. I still got messages from that time where people, uh, hundreds of motherfuckers, man, get well. Like, I, I just didn't want to see it. Like, I had mm. to really lock lock in. It's just like, I wouldn't thank you. Thank you. None of that. It, did, it didn't mean that I didn't I didn't really want to say thank you. But you know you what I'm saying? But just in a different mode. I was mode. in a different type of like, space. Like, that thank you for me was not genuine at at that time because i i had to literally lock in was pissed off. i was too mad bad, man i was i was, was i wasn't even pissed. i was hurt i was hurt that's Mentally. usually what it, it turned into the sadness turned into anger after a while was, for real it, like it was bad and during that time marriage went to shit like everything went bad on that time mm -hmm. you know yeah. what i'm saying that sadness and, turned into anger fast boy for real like it's a thin line between that shit for, for sure. real Hey, hey, Rome, real quick, I was just texting uh, Quincy Miller, bro, and he told me to tell you, he said, thank you, because you're really speaking, you know, you're really speaking to his heart, you know what I'm saying? And I think, I tell you this all the time I talk to you, like, people need to hear your story, bro. Like, I, when I hit you when you did your, your interview with Truck Bryant, bro, like, bro, that had me in tears, and I had you on my podcast before, you didn't tell me your story, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just go to show you how, like, people don't know what's going on yeah on inside we only see the outside they, we see rome on instagram they see, as, they see him as jerome randall the basketball yeah. you yeah. know what i'm saying like they see rome post on you know me on instagram him working out the shorties him uplifting them but they didn't know rome said he's still healing we don't know that if rome i'm still healing that. and quince you know and quince is crazy man i fuck with quince man and i ain't we ain't never really spent no time together shit kind of get me emotionally but you never know who really watching you bro and you never yes. know how you really helping people through your story, bro. Right. Like, and I, like for me, I feel like sometimes I be having a fucking wall in front of me and I, I want to do so much. You get what I'm saying? Because I know my story going to help a lot of people because I know a lot of motherfuckers going through this shit. You right. feel me? But we got to be open to allowing people to help. Hmm. And instead of motherfuckers trying to do it, like, nigga, we got to do that shit together. Like, literally. 
have these conversations, do that shit together. Now, what's your, okay, so a lot of people don't know how to do that. You know, I know. what I mean? And so what's I your I never advice? knew how to do it. Yeah, so, that, <laughs> that's, so that's why I'm going to ask you, like, what's your advice on how to open up and be acceptance, you feel me, of this, of that type of stuff for real, for real. I like, don't have advice, <laughs> nigga. I don't have that type of advice. What I'm trying to tell, tell what I you, don't, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't have that advice because if I tell you, it'd be bullshit. Yeah. yeah. I literally yeah. had to understand where I was. I've exerted every fucking thing that I possibly can and what I thought was right. It didn't work. You know what I'm saying? I got to try something else. That's the only advice that I have that worked for Jerome. Mm. Yeah. You feel me? I can't be giving out fucking advice and because I feel bad if the shit don't work out because you look to me. Like, I'd rather give you some real shit, like, to tell you, like, yo, what's happened? Like, you know what I'm saying? Have you did this, 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 and the third? If that's not working, go to the next one. If that's not working, go to the next one. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it needs to be other than me. Like, yo, you got to go and do this and, you know what I'm saying? And then everything yeah. goes good. Now, I don't give advice like that because anybody you see out here on Instagram saying that shit is bullshit. Yeah. It's mm. fucking so, bullshit. It don't even work like uh, that. Life don't even work like that. So for the people who can't read between the lines, basically what he essentially saying is keep fucking going. Keep At going. The end of the day, bro, bro, that's basically cry, what he's saying. Nigga, listen to me. Cry. Every fucking nigga, if you got to cry every day, cry, nigga. Yeah. Listen to me. I don't know who on here because I don't see how many people on here. But, 16. Listen, cry, nigga. Cry. If you got to get that shit out, get it out, nigga. I cry every day because I'm still healing. I'm trying to tell you, nigga. Like, it don't matter. I don't feel mm. the name of where I am and where I'm trying to go because I know where I'm going to be at. You feel me? Like, mm. but at the end of the day, we all go through shit. We all going to go through shit every fucking day. And that's just what it is. You feel me? You got to fight your own fight. Yeah. Stop looking at somebody else's success and then you want to try to follow their footsteps and what they got going on. It don't fucking work like that because their situation was different. It was different. Your fight need to be your fight. Period. Mm. That's Yeah, man. That's some... That's it. Hey, that's some real pointers right there, man. They... Look, I'm listening to you. Look, I needed to have this conversation with you. For real. It's the reason that you even hopped on here, like that's crazy to God's timing for real, for real, that you even just hopped on there. No, and facts. And it's, it's, and it's crazy it. you were saying that, bro, because as you were speaking, I'm like, man, Rome was somebody that kind of had a similar story that kind of like you said, you've been blackballed to a certain point. Because everybody I didn't talk to, not just from Chicago, like he was on with truck, truck from Brooklyn, truck from New York. Yeah. Samaj from from Ohio. They all said Rome is supposed to be in the league. It's like, there's nobody that can fuck with Rome. And we all, and from Chicago, we say that every day. Like, Rome it's, it's is so crazy. Derek like, Rose. The thing that I, I struggle with, I've never been able to get over it right now to this day. And it's real shit. This is the realest shit. It's like the work is hard, hard as you work to, to be disciplined, to love the game, to respect the game. To have talent, give all that to God, every fucking thing that you've done. Literally. When you've never put yourself in a position to lose that, but on someone else's fucking watch, they're the reason why you didn't get what you were supposed to get, what you felt you were supposed to get. Man. Do you know how fucking tough that is to live through? And for me to like hear that I was was blackballed from a reliable fucking source. Bro, bro that shit, I, I can't lie to you, nigga. Like, I that shit know, hurt. I'm shit, still, straight up, not a point blank period. That shit hurt, for I'm real. Still, oh, God. I'm not. Like, I, I'm not fucking over it. Like, and I have to at some point, but, nigga, I wake up and think about that shit, nigga. Like, every time I look at highlights of the NBA yeah. or... Yeah, at the hoop, I don't that even know if we can ever get fuck. over shit like that. I think you just learn how to cope, how to cope with it, it and then like try to you feel me change the per your, your perspective of it for real in a, in a way. You got to because if, if you don't, then you're gonna be out here angry and treating everybody wrong. Yeah. It's like that's just what it is. But 
I can't I can't be like that. I, my mom didn't teach me that way. Like you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I was always taught to give and to, you know what I'm saying? Be open to certain things, but I'm still a human being. I know I didn't do everything the right way, but no one can question my heart. Nobody. Thanks. No one yeah. can question. I love it. that, bro. I, I love that I, for real. The people like you can't question that shit. You can question it and say, I man, that fuck Ron don't fuck with nobody. Yeah, it's it's crazy. First time I ever even met Rome, I'm trying to tell you, like one of the realest, one of the realest dudes I ever ran into. He giving knowledge when he don't even have to, for real, for real. No, he giving thanks. game when he don't even have to, for real, for real. You don't owe nobody none of that, for real. You have a right to be pissed off if you want to. Like, thanks. man, when I tell you, when I first met Rome, man, I think. We we literally, I think he working out in the gym, you know what I'm saying? And I came in, I'm, I'm finna get my workout in and man, he just, he took me right under his wing for real, for real. I hopped in right on with him, you feel me? And man, he got the, you feel me, just being Rome, you know what I mean? Just giving back for real. And like, I don't know, that's something that, that always stick with me. You know what I'm saying? You feel me for real, for real. Like I always try to take that for real and do that same thing. You know what I mean? And Okay. give back you feel me like the knowledge and just pointers of this game for real for real that a lot of players that don't we don't really get that for real for real growing up you know what i'm saying we grow up just just thinking that it's just all about hoops for real it's just hooping we just go hoop for real. every hoop and solve everything what it be man. And he, he ain't never and he ain't never been hollywood bro like a lot of these never. dudes that feel like they have been on top of the world like it be i'll be on rome live i'll be chopping it up with him he, every time somebody come on there like yo i'm a six five dude from nigeria how do you do this and rome was like you free i'm gonna bring you on here i'm gonna you know i'm gonna tell you you know yeah. what i'm saying and i feel like he don't have to do that bro some dudes be like oh i'm gonna just read and not respond but or, you, you know, know what, what i'm saying let me let me let me let me uh correct you i do okay. have to do that shit, and mm -hmm. i'm doing it because i supposed to do it because i'm no different than that motherfucker that's that's trying to ask me for something ask yeah. me for mm -hmm. what makes me different because if we both was poor as fuck, we had conversations all day. Yeah. Oh, I felt that one. If we real. was fucking poor as fuck, me and you can have a conversation and talk for four hours. But just because I got more money than you, I can't have that same conversation with you because of what? My time is valuable? Why? What yeah. makes your fucking time valuable? Because mm -hmm. you and I got money? I feel you on that man because like recently like the past year i st i keep talking about extending grace i keep talking <laughs> about that for real for real because i be telling people like man for real bro like i be telling people like man who the fuck am i you feel me to like treat this person that way or judge this person this way like god you feel me have given me so many chances oh. gave me so many so much who I've been like I extend that grace to other people for real for real like I know nobody perfect everybody gonna mess up everybody trying to find their way everybody hurting in a way like man I, I just think people everybody need to just learn how to extend grace a little bit more for real I, for real I would sleep at night more when I do something for somebody the moment yeah. the moment I struggle a lot with sleeping is when I allow somebody to take me out of my character <laughs> You get what I'm saying? I say that same thing. That's, that's, that's just that's, like a real loss. That's real, when, like a real. I allow somebody to take me out of my character. That's when I don't sleep as much. That's when I don't get rest. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm thinking about that shit, and I'm not being myself. I'm not being my authentic self. You know what I'm saying? But the yeah. moment I'm I'm operating in a way that I know God want me to operate. You know what I'm saying? I get a better rest. I get better rest. You know what I'm saying? But I've had a stretch where. I've allowed myself to get out of character too long. You know what I'm saying? And that's when I had sleepless nights. You get what I'm saying? But the moment I'm like, you know what? Okay, I'm not going to let that person get to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm every morning I'm trying to wake yeah. up. I ain't picking up my phone. You know what I'm saying? Let me try to meditate and think about how I want my day to yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. Them the it's real death. Hard to do it. like, you know, it's hard to do it every single morning, but it's like, I'm trying to make that my routine. Let me, let me, let me envision... You know what I'm saying? My fucking day. Let me envision my day. I know it's possible somebody can say something to me that's going to get me out of character. <laughs> I already prepared for your ass at 5 o'clock in the morning. 
I prepared <laughs> while you was for your stupid ass ready at for five it. o'clock in the morning. I knew your stupid ass was coming. Yeah. So I'm not gonna let you get me out of that shit. You feel me? <laughs> hey, I swear, bro. I swear, bro, because I be saying the same thing. Like them be feeling like real L, bro. Like when the people get me out of L's. character, bro. Like oh, oh, man, L's. I be. It's cool. He dropped me a few points. You feel me? But. I'm aware, though. I'm going to get back. You know what I'm saying? What I'm supposed to be, though, for real. It's Bro, cool. we all start off at 100 in the morning. By the end of the day, we at 15. <laughs> I'm so much you, man, dropping man, your points all 15. day, for real, man. Man, you know how many times I start off at 100? I've been at one. <laughs> I've been at one. Just imagine you lose all of that. Your whole, everything about yourself. Everything, nigga. You ain't even yourself at the end of the day. You are yeah. one. Like, just imagine that shit. You were one. I'm, one. Uh, I'm be like, man. Right, no way. And that's why y'all, when y'all talking about Russ for real, man, he don't take no shit, bro. And like, it'd be so funny for real. Cause like, hey, damn, I'm gonna get, bro, like, I'll get back <laughs> on. I gotta answer this. I'm gonna get back on. Okay, but, 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 but. <laughs> yeah, man, wrong, man. Man, bro, man, I, I kind of want to say my bad, bro, but it's like it didn't turn into something that we both needed. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they have like, on for a reason. Bro, that was for bro, a reason. Bro, and that's crazy. Like, so my J is, that's my dude. Like, I talk to him often. Jay Randall, I talk to him often. So it's like, yeah, for you to be talking about that, bro, and for both of them to come over there, like, be the perfect person that needs to tell you that, bro, is like crazy, bro. Yeah. You said you spiritual, bro. Like, I believe in that, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was spiritual. Hey, I crazy, had no was... idea you feel me. Them two was even gonna hop on for real, for real. Man, like, bro, oh, like, like, man, bro, that was nothing but God for like for you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't tell them to come on now. I'm interviewing you. This for me and you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like that's man, why I'm bro. Home hopped on that though. Cause Rome, man, he has a lot of a lot of great pointers for real, for real, for people that man, understand thanks. what it really take for real, for real. And like Rome is man. Look, I'm gonna tell y'all right now. Shit, Rome better than me. On some real life, like, bro, he, he, Rome is elite, elite, bro. Like, especially at his size and at everything, for real, for real. Man, and for him not to ever get his big break as hard as he worked for as long as he worked, that's a tough pill to swallow, man. And I just feel like a lot of people just don't really understand what athletes go through. And I'm not even just talking about basketball players you know what i'm saying like Thanks. athletes in general when it comes to that stuff for real man we we really pour our heart into you feel me this shit for real we've been doing this our entire life for real and then to Thanks. like you know what i'm saying like i never personally been had no major injuries or anything mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so man i, I understand for real like it's tough man it's tough. I really appreciate him for even hopping on. No, nah, for sure. We all need sure. this motherfucker for real today. No, nah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I'm just glad that kind of happened, bro, because that kind of was, man, like, that just <laughs> so happened. They came in right as you were speaking about that, bro. Like, that's crazy to me, bro. Like, I, at that no, particular moment. No, I can see moment, it on your face when, they, when everybody, when it started to, man, you like, damn, man. I didn't know this episode was going to take yeah. this type of, you feel me, turn. Yeah, like, so, like, this happened before, you know what I'm saying? But it was one of my guys, he was a podcast, too. So I kind of would just get him on there to kind of connect with him. And yeah. I usually don't never like to bring nobody on when I'm interviewing somebody because I feel like it's between me and you. Yeah, I get that, too. Can, can always go, you know, differently when it's supposed to be about you getting your story out, you know what I'm saying? But it was like, he was like, ass broke when I come on. He was like, it's cool. He giving you game. And then all of a sudden I look down and Rome trying to hop in. I'm like, man, yeah. this is two perfect people that came to my mind when you was talking about that, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. Man. It's crazy so much. I like a lot of people, you feel me, go through like the same story, but it's different though. Thanks. You know, everybody on their own journey though. But man, like that's what I was trying to, that's what I was just explaining when I was talking, man. It's like this. It's tough for real. And, like, you got to understand, them two players that have gotten further than me. So, in a sense, they have dealt with, like, you feel me, way more heartbreak than I had to deal with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so, really, for them to even be at the point that they at, uh, you know what I'm saying? I commend them for real, for real, for that. Like, okay. that's that takes a lot of strength, a lot of resilience, a lot of all of that and all we still pack the fuck up and go over there you feel me for the love and do what you gotta do yeah yeah we still pack up and do that shit and sacrifice for real like 
They was just talking about money for real. That's the reason why I'm back home. Cause the team I just was with just was playing with my playing with my money and stuff like that for real, for real. What do you say? Don't pay no play. <laughs> Like, God, I come back. What? Home. I lost my mind. I oh, ball out of bounds. Like what? They man, it's it's a lot of ins and outs of that stuff that people don't really talk about for real, for real. Like man, they it's a grimy cold game now for real. Like this game, like I said, is so far away from its essence and its foundation for real. Right now, like it's it's not the game is it's it's way more skilled than it's ever been individually skilled than it's ever been nice. for but as, as far as like i said the, the foundation and the essence is lost it's watered down it's lost for real it's every way possible bro to the physicality of it to the to the just the business part of it i swear bro honestly i know a bunch of people that wouldn't even tune into the nba if they wasn't betting on it Facts, bro. Like I've been trying to watch it. I, I swear, don't even bro, be mad like, if I miss the game, watch it bro. for real, no more. It's it's horrible. It's facts, like sometimes I feel. Like, I don't even. Be, I don't even be mad if I don't catch a game, bro. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, I'll watch the. I'll watch the highlights on YouTube. You know, what yeah, I'm it's sit and watch a full game, bro. It's like it's it's, a, it's hard to do. Pickup game now for real. No, glorified pickup basketball for real, man. Facts, bro. facts. Man, Brody, like I said, I want to apologize that I ain't expected us to be on here for two hours, man. But you know <laughs> damn, we've been on here for two hours. It's two o'clock, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And like I said, I just want to appreciate. I appreciate you again, bro, for coming on my platform. You know, what I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed and I'm honored that you came on here and got some game for two pro players. You know, what I mean, good people that didn't mind coming on here, chopping it up with you for the yeah. people. You know what I'm saying? I know you got the fam with you, you know what I'm saying? So I ain't trying to take no more of your time, but we got <laughs> They was you know in that man? nap and they just got up not too long ago, man. Yeah, for sure, you know what I mean? So, man, but this definitely is what I needed. I'm going to talk to both of them. I'm going to talk to Q Miller, bro, yeah. see if we can just we get on here later. Another time, for real, man. I I love this type of stuff, for real, for real. Uh, That's really what it really be about, for real. You for know? sure, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm going to talk to him, man, see if we can get back on here later, man. We got a lot of people on here. I'll hit them up, let it see if I can come on here and get them on there, bro. If you free, tap in, I'll bring you in. Or if you just want to listen. But, you sure, know what bro, I'm saying? I'm always uh, down. I'm always down to do this type of stuff, for sure. So, you know, send me your line, bro. I'll I text you, you know what I'm saying? And, man, bro, best of luck to you. I'll tap in with you, my guy. Appreciate you, bro. It was my pleasure, bro. I appreciate you for having me on here, man. For sure. All love, brody. All right. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. For sure. Love.